What's the deal, my people? You know who it is, the Don Tony Tefla. That just popped right on, Phil. Did it, did it just pop on for you, too? It came on quick. <laughs> I'm like, how did that happen? I was at, like, number three, and then all of a sudden it just jumped <laughs> on it. Anyway, you know what this is, the After the Escaping From podcast, Don Tony Teflon, Phil the Issues guy. I know a lot of people have problems with Amazon, shame on Amazon for pulling that on people and changing the schedule at the last second, right? They should have not done that and everything else, you everything else. But listen, we told you from the beginning, we got our girl. She's rocking with us. She's here live. Even though she's hanging out, she still made time to come on the show and rock with us, rock with you. Would you like to introduce our guest, please, Phil? Yes, the wonderful Chloe Van Lanshoe. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Toronto. This is the really beautiful little skyline of Toronto. Right now you can see the CN Tower. Welcome. Welcome Hello. to Toronto. You know, welcome to you. Welcome to you. Join. Thank you for joining us here on the on the on this uh, show and everyone else. Everybody knows the deal. Seven eight one nine nine zero eight five zero nine. If you want to call in and ask a question, Chloe, you're, you're a beautiful woman. It was your episode. It was your episode today. We had a great time watching you do the dissection on the body. How was it? Was playing that scene right off the bat. The like the autopsy of it the all. Autopsy, yes. Uh, yeah, it was gross, but <laughs> <laughs> it was gross. It's crazy. With scenes like that, you just don't know what you're going to walk into. Like, neither does Christy and neither does the actor either. You don't know what they've created in terms of the aesthetics of the, of the body and all of that. So you're really, you are, the audience is also witnessing what we're witnessing too as actors. It's all new for us too. So yeah, it was weird and wild and gross and uh, deeply unsettling as you saw with christy she was bothered by it all <laughs> everyone in the everyone yeah, in the chat is excited go ahead go ahead film sorry oh no everyone in the chat is really excited to see you saying hello <laughs> nurses rock i don't believe the smiley's dead all of that stuff <laughs> So you're you're hanging out right now. Uh, this, wow. is a big, this is a big celebration for your episode seven, correct? This is uh episode seven, yeah. Christy, Chris, it's a big one for Christy. Christy let it, Christy let it all hang loose in a way in episode seven. She got some stuff off of her chest, metaphorically, physically. You know, I, I, I want to say this, you know, you know, you're a nurse in real life, right? Correct. Yeah. All right, yes, and, and so I was just wondering, like the autopsy was nice, but. What about the brain? I mean, don't we, in these autopsies, don't they go for the brain? Mm, no brain? That's a whole other procedure. Like, often, actually, what we did on the show is kind of where you start. Like, okay. you start in kind of the chest cavity area. You make an incision. You open up. And the brain is a whole other game. I don't know. Maybe we'll see an episode of Chrissy getting in the brains of it all. But she's busy. <laughs> she's so busy this season poor thing i'm so tired watching her i'm like oh my god girl you need you need help <laughs> someone help you you need therapy <laughs> honey stop taking everyone's stop taking so much on stop with your nobility complex it's enough <laughs> <laughs> as bad as that is for Chrissy, as awesome that is for Chloe. That must have been fun looking at this season and seeing all the all the drama you got to play with in the character and uh, to do this season. It must have just been a lot of fun to kind of go through all those crazy emotions. Oh, it was wild. I mean, when I whenever I got a script each episode, I was like, oh, yes, Chrissy finally gets to have some feelings let out. Because season one, I think we just see her this, like, container of trying to keep it together, trying to keep her cool, trying to be respected. And then season two, we're met with Marielle, who sh obviously shakes everything up, it holds a mirror to Christy in a way, and we get to see her unravel. And I think that's really interesting. And I learned so much about Christy in the process as well. I mean, these things are so organic and they're an ecosystem in themselves. and. Yeah, it's been such a wild journey. I'm still learning about her. Watching her on screen, I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So you are, yep, okay. I, there's some things I do differently, but no, I, I, I support you. It's, it's wild. Did you know in season one that 
she would be showing up in season two or was that a sort of what something you learned in the off season was that something that they talked to you about in season one that yeah eventually we want her to show up it got like accidentally dropped to me <laughs> it, shortly after we wrapped season one that Marielle would be coming to town so I had an idea but I didn't know I wasn't really led into the casting process with any of it either they were like quite secretive about it so I was like are we gonna am I gonna get a chemistry read do I get a say and I didn't get a single say but it's it was amazing because who the, like Kaylin's amazing and it all happened really fast we had like a week and a half to be like who are who are these two people together and that's what you're seeing two people trying to figure it out in real time <laughs> yeah and i was gonna say you know you didn't get the towel read and it seems like y'all have some really good chemistry together how is it yeah and stuff? oh she's amazing i mean i think like kaylin's such a present and dedicated and, and intelligent actor so you just when you're met with that you just go to set and you let whatever happens happen you don't need to plan too much you just let it take care of itself <laughs> Uh, let's go to some voicemails and uh, this some from, voicemail. Some voicemail. Let me do my let me do my podcast. Let's go to some voicemails. Uh, this is area code eight four eight. Hey, what's up, Tony, Phil, and uh, I guess uh, Chloe. Hi. Uh, my name's Ryan from New Jersey. It's my first time calling, and my question is, uh, I was wondering for the the autopsy tonight. Where do you think that the blood worms uh, were if they weren't uh, in, in the body when it was there? And I know you can't fully uh, answer this, uh, Chloe, but I guess this so this is for everybody and just an opinion. Um, where do you think they were if they just like evaporated because the body was dead? Or do you think maybe overnight they crawled out? And I, yeah. I, in- yeah, what, what do you no, think? No, such a good question. I don't think we're done with them yet. I don't think they disappeared. I think there's been a pause with them, but I think we're going to be reintroduced to them in like a deep, deep way and keep tuning in to find out because we're not at the end of the road yet. <laughs> nice. Now, I deal with what, 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 what's so I want to understand a little bit better. I know you said it was dry. Is it like mummified is that is that what they were going for yeah like like usually in an autopsy when you open up a body it's full of fluid there's like in in, and liquid and and even though it's dead there's something lifelike about it and when christy opened it up it was like something out of a museum like it was preserved in a way mummified like it reminded me a lot of like what you would see like the cadavers that we worked on in when i was in nursing school like they were preserved like the organs were still intact, but they were like museum-like, preserved in a way, and it was very confusing. And it's for Christy, it's like she was looking for something useful, and you can't do much with that at all. As, as, a, as an actor on the show and being somebody that has so much experience in the medical world, do you offer your advice on when medical procedures happen on the show to add more realism to the situation? Oh, totally. I mean, when they found out I was a healthcare worker, they were like, oh, okay, so tell us how this, these <laughs> things go. But you never know. Sometimes they're like, okay, cool, Chloe. Like, that's nice and all, but that's not going to be dramatic enough for the show. Mm. Uh, but they weren't like that at all. They were like, oh, no, we want the facts. We Let's keep it real. So it was amazing to have that level of agency over all of the medical scenes. Like everything you see on the show is like 85 percent quite how it would go. And like 15 percent fantasy land because we're in Fromville. So we got to buy in in some way. But yeah, no, it was. Whoa, here we go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, this is hard to hold. Um, no worries. But it was, yeah, it was amazing to bring so much of that training that I have as a healthcare worker into this role. So, yeah, it's all keeping it real as possible. Nice. John Henderson wants to know, he says, hi, Chloe. Did you like the nurse Christie's season two haircut? (laughs) This is such a point of contention. I went on Reddit the other day and people went, like, there's like such vitriol for Christie's haircut. I was like, this is wild. Someone had like literally copy pasted the haircut and then like put it on all the characters. And I was like, this is so funny, but like, oh my God. 
the time people have is amazing. The dedication to it. Um, yeah, skills impecca- and dedication. Impeccable, impeccable. <laughs> um, Gotta respect do, do, do I like it? I mean, you know what? We're we're doing we're doing haircuts in Frumville. We 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 take what we can get. I think for for Christy it was like trying to lean into like parts of her identity that she had let go of a lot in a way because she's responsible for a lot. And Marielle was like, "No, let me give you your bangs back, bitch. Like, come here, like the queer of it all, you know." And I know for me as a human, like the haircut was a big one. And I think for Christy too, it was like. For some people, it's like, wow, bad haircut. But for Christy, it's like, oh, wait, one sec. I mean, maybe, yeah, bad haircut, but, like, my bangs are back. And, like, I kind of remember who this person was. And, yeah, it's a little deeper than just, like, an aesthetic. Yeah, because I think, you know, Ben, with, with this trinket that you had and everything, reminds you of who you were before you got Exactly. That, that was the point. But we're also in Frumville. No one's a professional. We're, everyone's trying their best. You know, and I think I think the audience needs to be a little more gentle with everybody. Like these, all these characters are just trying their best, man. I have to say something though, Kenny. You know, we picked the wrong time to in this episode with display his emotional feelings. Bad timing by Kenny. It was the worst timing in the world. But like, have you ever been in a fight where it's good timing? No, that's called a fight. It, it is, but he had, he, I mean, his mom asked him, Kenny, you good, you good. And then all of a sudden you're like, it ain't us together. You got her, but but I still love you. Are you, you're the, you, you there's no need this love. There's no need, there's a dead body of a monster here, bro. There's a lot. I know. It's like, really? Of all the times you're going to lay this bomb? Fine. Let's, fine. Fine. But you know what? Whatever that was led Christy to be like the monster of it all. Thrash, 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 bile. That it all worked. needed to happen. It did. It did. Now, bile, that is something that they use to what? Digest the food? Is that what bile is used for? Yeah, it's also the thing. Like, when you vomit, that's mm-hmm. what the yellow stuff is. That's so bile. You say, uh, so you say, are you saying that your girlfriend, when she vomited, the bile that came out of her mouth? When every, when anyone vomits, it's bile. Yeah. bile. Eventually, eventually gets down it, it looks a little yellow. I'm just I'm, I'm trying to make bile is yellow. Work. Yeah, no, the, the consistency is correct. Yes, they worked hard on that. The special effects folks, they did good. That's how bile looks. Very yogi. You know, bile, yeah, bile is uh, um, required to digest, rest and digest food, and it's what happens when you when you throw up bile is accompanied as well the yellow stuff it's, <laughs> it's when you it's when you know you've gotten it all out when, when, yeah. uh, it's you're at the end of the line you're, okay okay i'm i'm done now i'm uh, i'm at i've reached my limit no the end of the line was when you're like actively dry heaving and there's nothing left and you wish there was something to produce you're eating just so you can put more out <laughs> yeah. Oh, anyway, so, uh, bro, this is so gross. I love it. Let's take a couple more voicemails. This is from Eric. <laughs> so voicemails. Hello, I'm Jaden Cole from Washington, and I was wondering, do you think that everyone at the end of the show is going to die, or they are going to escape? From the- all right, Thank you. Bye. That's a great question. We all have no idea if we're living or if we're dying. The writers <laughs> tell us nothing. We know as much as our characters do, it's amazing. So whatever you're watching That's it. is what we're watching too as actors. Yep. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I know mean, if it's a lie. I don't know if it's a, I don't know. I think it's, for me, I think this season is a lot of people confronting their trauma i think like thematically like watching tabitha and like with the with the kids and the unpacking of all of the loss of her kid and they're kind of being resurrected in this way as these ghoulish kids is like really interesting and i'm like i think it's there's a lot of trauma-based um purpose i think in season two that makes sense so i don't know we don't know is what i'm saying i'm rambling no, no, no! You do, you do, you do. People are saying, Christy, Christy, after this episode, Christy is wearing Kenny's pants now. Uh, I, I think they're talking about the high water pants. Right. Uh, 
Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, you know, maybe. Yeah, she had to, but again, as you said, it took that trauma from Kenny to get her to dead body, reduce the pile. And everything. So, everything right. Everything worked hand in hand, right? It all, it all worked out. It's, we're all connected here. We're all on the same, all on the same page. Uh, Luna wants to know, do you like not knowing what's going to happen next? Or would you rather just have the whole script? I don't like knowing because, I mean, when do you ever know anything? Never. I think as an actor, it's like when you know too much, you know too much, and then you're going to act like you know too much. I like not knowing. It keeps it real, it keeps it alive, it keeps it spontaneous and unpredictable. And I think that's what's the great thing about the show is like all the actors are like, we don't know what's going on here. And uh, and that feeds into like the characters that you watch. And I think it's super relatable when you don't know. Yeah, it's frustrating. I I'm frustrated too, but like it's way more interesting to act and, and perform not the unknown than it is the prediction of it all. And I've heard you talk about that a little bit before when uh, you guys first started to do the show and it was in the middle of the quarantine and you were all kind of trapped in a new location. Together. Yeah. It felt like you were, you know, kind of reflecting what was going on in the show. Totally. Yeah. It was kind of wild actually. So it's, it feels like a simulation at times of the, it's hard to separate these characters from the reality of filming it too in a way because I'm like yeah I think we're all the people we're playing sometimes but it's nice. cool it's a it's a journey man totally nice uh, Emily asked I was surprised that Christy didn't didn't ask Fatima if she wanted to keep the baby baby as this is not the best situation I get why she didn't but do you think that she it should have been discussed as a fellow RN. I was wondering. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Christy in that moment is reading Fatima, and ultimately, if that's something Fatima wanted to discuss, they would have that conversation. But that's not up to Christy to decide. That's a a moment that Fatima would have to reflect to her, and then they would, yeah. It's up to Fatima to have that conversation, not up to Christy. Uh, and we got Emily asked again, uh, are we ever going to find out how your character arrives? I think you'll have to just keep watching. There you go. Uh, Ooh, do nice you, people say, do you think Christy is the mole? Because I do. That's Jim. He thinks you're the mole. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's cool. He's certainly saving a lot of people's lives. For I, the I don't think it's a mole. I don't think it's a mole. I, I just don't. I don't, I don't know. know. It doesn't fit for you to be. Why? Mole. Why do you say that? Tony it's, uh, because on? number one, you have to in order to be the mole, like, you have to be it. there for a specific amount of time, and I think you haven't been there long enough to be the mole. You're number making one. a lot of assumptions here, Tony Teflon. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a lot of assuming. I am um, assuming. I am assuming, and I assume hmm. you're not. I, I'm gonna go. Well, with it. you're entitled to your assumptions. It's fine. I'm, I'm gonna you go keep, with it. You keep assuming things over there. It's fine. I'm gonna. I, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> will. I'm gonna try with that. I want to keep get that sound bite. You're making a lot of assumptions. Tony. Everyone yeah. says, yeah, everyone says they love the way you say Tony Temple. That's what we're gonna. Have. <laughs> We're gonna, uh, we're gonna clip that and we're gonna put that in the intro. We love a sound bite. Uh, people wanna know, does Christy love Kenny? Of course. Who doesn't love Kenny? He's impossible not to love. I'm so frustrated by the boy, but he's a darling. Who doesn't love Kenny? I haven't met a single person on the internet who's like, Kenny needs to go. Everyone's like, team Kenny. Uh, of course. Uh, watch the, watch the show. <laughs> watch the show. <laughs> We're talking about our show. <laughs> we give it to Kenny every week. He is such a nice guy. He just gets in his own we way. Love, we love Kenny. We love Who doesn't Kenny. get in their own way? That's what very I love true. about Kenny. He's very, very true. He's, he's very, very human. 
He's and, very human about it. And all. we were talking about that earlier, where he, everyone has been in that situation where you say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. He, he immediately knew right afterwards, right when you walked off and gave him the what? Gave him the. Like, the look. He's like, oh, what did I do? Like, and I was, I've been Kenny in that moment where totally. I said it. And you're like, oh, did I really just say that? It was, it was sort of a. He immediately knew he went too far, and then he had his little pity party, and then he showed yeah. up. That's all you. Can and he's do. here. It's he's he's the human of it all for sure. I do that. I've been doing that every five minutes on this talk show right now. Being like, <laughs> um. So, but before before we lose, let's take a couple of quick bits from the from yeah. some of the voicemails here. This is uh from our friend at Voice Nine One Six. Hello, this is the Voice at Nine One Six. Hello, Tony. Hello. Hi. Tony. Hello. You're welcome, Chloe. What a wonderful voice. I'm out to, to talk to the Teflon family. We've been looking forward to you coming to join us for quite some time. Uh, I understand you have your fingers in a lot of pots. You act, you're, you're, you're directed, as well as being nurse at the time of COVID during the peak. That must have been insane. And let me be the let me be one to thank you for, for the time you put in and all the stress you must have been. Thank you so much for the bottom of the spot. Now I admire how you have been able to bring all of that uh, energy and anxiety into playing the role of Christy. Um, I know that must have been challenging uh, for you uh, personally as well as socially, but it really comes through that humanity that you bring to the world. It's, it really shines through, and we really, really see that. Um, I know a lot of people uh, talk to you about the role of Christy in terms of the relationship with Sue as well as Marielle. But I'd like to ask you about Christy as an individual. How has being in Frumville affected her personally? So yeah, it's exactly that. So how has being in uh, Frumville affected Chrissy personally? Big time. Yeah, I think so interesting. I'm, again, still learning. I think when you have that level of responsibility on you, um, that people are constantly looking to you for an answer, for a solution, to save a life, you have to put away so much of your own humanity in a way in order to be respected, in order to be uh, trusted and kind of relied upon. So I think there's so much of her identity that makes her the human parts of her like have evaporated a bit and I think that's what's so interesting about season two is like the introduction of Mary Al is a reminder of all of that it's like who like she has to wake up to who she is and um it's so interesting the haircut of it all too it's like it's working but it's not working and there's something wrong about it and she knows it but it's like she doesn't know she doesn't know it's so vulnerable she's in a very vulnerable spot of identity and i'm well playing her trying to figure it out too i think we're both along for the ride <laughs> we're both we're both figuring it out does that answer the question yeah no absolutely <laughs> very, very well so i just want to say how do you feel? I think it's one of the most beautiful things about this show is the diversity okay, of the show. Mm -hmm. I don't really see shows with this much diversity. How, how is it to work on a show with such a diverse cast uh, and everything else? Yeah, I mean, everyone's incredible. I think everyone brings their heart and their soul to this show, and it's beautiful to watch and experience. And I think everyone offers such a unique and genuine perspective of their own life that they bring into the work. And I think that's what makes this show so unique and special is that you're watching actual human beings try to figure out this hellscape. And it's, there's something relatable to it. You know, you, you gravitate to these people, you're rooting for them, you're confused by them because they're experiencing shit we've all dealt with as people. So it's it's kind of wild in a way. 
uh, just a step away from from for one second. Uh, yeah. you, you worked recently on a short you directed and acted in. And, yeah. Uh, two, two of them in. Is is that what you're going to New York for the premiere? Is it for for that for that for that? Yeah. Is, it, is it called yeah. Title? Can you tell us a little bit about Tidal. that? Yeah. So Title's my little art baby. I made. Uh, I had like three weeks off of shooting while we were in Nova Scotia, and I brought my scrubs with me um to halifax i was like i think i'm gonna make something here i don't know what there will be scraps involved hospitals and uh a really good friend of mine had access to a great camera and was like i think you should just try to explore your life of a nurse and i was like okay so title is externalizing the internal world of a nurse uh, as she tries to find home and it's a movement piece there's no words uh and yeah it's kind of my reflection of my experiences navigating pandemic life awesome that sounds yeah. that sounds great people keep an eye out for it and you also worked on a second one with scott mccord correct yeah yeah so uh darling scott uh yeah we uh he watched title and he really liked the process of it all he came to me with an idea uh while we were shooting he's like i think i want to make something in that vein of no script and i was like let's do it so yeah we uh we shot it it's beautiful and now we're putting it together the right. scriptlessness of it all <laughs> nice but my mom was a nurse registered yeah. nurse uh so i spent a lot of time in the hospital as a child very traumatic for me and my mom was yeah you know you know my mom was you know in Queens, New York, in you know, the uh, emergency room. So she used to always bring me in when I was little and say, Tony, come up here. I got to show you something. I'm not coming in. She goes, look at this guy. He's on drugs. He's going to die. Look at this guy. He just got shot. You want to get shot? This is what it's going to look like. Blah, blah, blah. So I always go yeah. through that when I was little and stuff like that. But I do understand. I love nurses. I love the. She's always telling me that nurses are the ones who deal. Doctors only do a diagnosis. And that was it. But the nurses would be like, that, that was not cool. It's, it's, a, it's a collective effort of everyone. <laughs> Truly. I believe I 100% believe you. I, we're going we're gonna to let you bounce we, uh, because we know you're at a festival. We want you to enjoy your night. I'm having a great time. We're chatting. But uh, yes, I do have to work in the morning too. So I'll, I'm going to head home. Hey, no, the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you're still working. So in between seasons, yeah. you're, you're still yeah. I go back. Around. Yeah, I go back. How yeah. is you going back? You know, to the job, being on the television for like, like Yeah, that must be a tough shift, like a mental shift to go from uh, like a set mode to uh, hospital mode. <laughs> totally. Yeah, you're like a. I don't know. I mean, you're. It's. I just become a sensitive little nerve ending. Um, <laughs> I have no more armor, and I'm like, wow, how did I do this job of a nurse for six years? It's a big real. No, I love going back because it's a huge reality check and a reminder of what it means to be a human and perspective and uh my, yeah I, I i will always go back yeah no matter what that, it's, that uh, the people in the live chat are saying chloe's the nurse in real life yes she is absolutely <laughs> yes. she was actually working during the uh during the pandemic in the middle yeah. of it and uh, got brought out of all of that onto the set and uh auditioned over zoom and stuff yeah. during uh, <laughs> during saving people's lives and then got brought right onto the set and uh sorry to tell your story for you but that's i'm cool. here for it phil that's basically that, that, that's the the cliff notes of it i guess and she uh and then she ends up in the show and then goes right back to work and saving people's lives. <laughs> and, and we, we wish you nothing but success. We do everything we can to promote the show. It's a great show. We want, you know, I look at a lot of the actors on the show. So people like you, you know, you like how you can do regular jobs, just driving, you got a dream, just driving everything else. And it's, if you make it, it's kind of blessed, baby. So it's just like, it's Aww, and stuff, beautiful. You know? And so we'll do everything we can. We salute you. We hold this shot up for you. Tonight. Salute. <laughs> We got the vodka soda. We got the shot. We got With the ex-girlfriend in the background. We got my ex-girlfriends all in the background here too. <laughs> <laughs> they're all here. They're all. They're over here. Hi, hi, hi Chloe's ex-girlfriend. Hi, Chloe's ex-girlfriend. They're, they're in. Yeah, they're all over there. Don't you know how much you fucked up on that one? That you guys don't <laughs> mess up. You fucked up on that one. You dropped the bag on that one. <laughs> don't do it too, Kenny. Don't do it too, Kenny. Bye. <laughs>
they all pulled the candy. All right. Thank you so much. We're gonna hopefully we can have you back on. Yeah, totally. Come back maybe. on. From another music festival, maybe. After every time you come on, you have to be at a music festival. That, I think cool. it's the bit. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's the it's the Chloe <laughs> bit for the show. It's the bit. It is. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> that that is. Myself. She's at another music festival. God. Uh, <laughs> How many music festivals are there? I thought she said she was a nurse. Damn it. <laughs> like, I'm confused. I can't keep. What is this narrative? <laughs> is, she a, is she a roadie or is she a nurse? I don't know. <laughs> it got some roadie energy now. Uh, okay. now She's got to go move some equipment. The show's almost over, but thank it's you so happening. much, Chloe. Really thank, you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for so coming fun. on. Thank you. Uh, you know, and uh, we'll have you back on again soon. Of course. Again. That is, the, that is the nurse that we all love. That's the one, the only Chloe. Give it up for a few. Give it up for her. Hi. Oh, my goodness. She's amazing. Oh, she's great. She's beautiful. And I'm glad that she came on and stuff. I wish she had more time to speak to her, but she, you know, she has to, she has to, she's doing stuff right now. Exactly. We, we, we don't want to keep her too much from having no. a good time before she has to get up in the morning. But Chloe is exactly. what amazing. A, what and a great also, interview she is. And we also had a great uh, conversation before the show started. We did, we did, we did. And, uh, and RC says, Super Chat, this show was the best. I still believe Donna is the mole. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. Yeah, and, uh, and we're going to get right into this episode. We apologize tonight to those of you that left some voicemails for Chloe, it was a little tough for her to hear over the music and stuff. Yes. So, so uh, we'll, we'll cut it short. I'll save these voicemails. I can almost guarantee that we'll have Chloe on again she'll in the future. Yes, yeah, she'll be back and we'll play the voicemails again. We apologize, but the fact that she was at the festival, we tried it, we ran it before the show started, and it just you know, with the background noise and everything else, we couldn't get to all of them and stuff. And, and it was just awesome of her to even come on down. Uh, Tony, I'm gonna go run and grab a drink. I'll be right back. Hold it right, down. We'll I'll, I'll, I'll keep everyone but I'll keep everyone busy yeah, while Phil grabs a drink and everything else. You know, I, I like this episode, I thought it was one of the best episodes of the season. I know people. Some people did had problems with it, and I, and especially about Amazon and everything else. I will say that you know that Amazon did put out a statement that they they were going to change the uh, the feature of when you watch the episode, but they did it at the end of the episode. I mean, it'd be too too close to when the episode started, uh, and they, they should have did something better than that and everything else. But uh, no, she's she's a doll. Glad to have her on. You know what I mean? And next week. Next week, we have on the actor who plays Elgin will be on here rocking with us. So we'll have him on next week. Oh, I can't wait uh, to talk know, to Elgin. He, he going to get it because I already told his ass, you motherfucker. How are you in the goddamn bathtub with a potato sack on? Uh, we're we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that tonight. You can't do that, bro. You, you repping for the dime here, bro. You know, you can't be doing that shit, bro. But uh, yeah, so we we he'll be on here next week and everything. I said, well, I'm gonna tell him just like I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I'm gonna tell him, I'm gonna tell him again, straight up. Can't be up in no bathtub, no potato sack, bro. But I do, I do have to say again, huge thanks to Chloe, who was at, who was at a concert. Obviously, could have uh, easily sent a message to Tony Ooh. tonight and said uh, we got to postpone. But she did want to make it happen. We didn't want to keep her too long at the concert, but we will have her on again in the off season or or next season for sure. Yeah, people saying that he don't take baths. So that ain't no. <laughs> Listen. Just because you don't take baths don't mean you don't know how to. He was and dreaming. You, you know, he was dream. It was a dream. It's definitely a dream, but you but you don't dream of yourself in a potato sack. Where'd that come from? <laughs> you, you never wore that in the show. Where'd that come from? The potato it's, sack. it's a weird dream. You know, you, you can't yeah, control it looked like, it looked like what a, you're dreaming. It, it looked like a bundle bag. You know them bundle bags they put you in like when you spent it out of a girl's house back in yeah. the, not us. We were alive back the, then. See, Tony, the Brundles. It's all about the Brundles. You know, but back in the day, you know, when, when, when the Civil War, everybody you spent out of a lady's house, they put you in that bundle bag and sew you shut to make sure, and just have your head out, just to make sure that you didn't do nothing all night. That's what it looked like he was rocking. using the damn bundle bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Phraziness Gull, uh, with some of the stuff with Fatima compared with Sun and Jin, uh, with what happened with them and pregnancy stuff, it very well could be the similar world. But let's get into this episode because there, because there's so much to talk about here tonight. Uh, Tony, should we get right into the recap? Yes, sir. Okay, so this episode was called Belly of the Beast, and we open right up with Christy and Fatima. She's asking Fatima about the pregnancy test. Are you sure? Have you told Ellis? Uh, 
Chrissy, Chrissy has really great bedside manner and, and, and now meeting, now meeting Chloe, she's, she, I know. And I, wait a second, wait a second. What's that? Oh, she shut that down. All right, there you go. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Chloe is such a great actress because she's nothing like Christy. No. And uh, it, Christy is just so calm and comforting. Not that, not that, uh, not that uh, Chloe's not comforting or something, but uh, they, it's just a really good scene of her trying to calm her down and, and let her know it's going to be all right. But Fatima is, almost going with the Boyd philosophy here, Tony, where, where the minute someone's pressing a question, like what's really wrong with you? She just gets, she, she uses Kenny coming into room as an excuse to be like, I gotta go. And she just, she pieces out. We, we know eventually we have the conversation with Donna with what's going on, but uh, it's a, it's a good opening scene with Chrissy and Fatima, because one thing I do like about this show, Tony, just from a structural standpoint is every, every week, the first scene that we see connects to the last scene from the last episode for the most part we don't yeah. have some weird cold open thing or something they they just start where they left off which is not every show does that and i appreciate that they do that yeah i agree i, I like the fact that they continue the story right then there's no time jump there's no all of a sudden one time they're eating breakfast and next time they come up it's dinner time yeah. and i think they have to do that because time is such a factor in the show right so the the night time the daytime is such a factor that they have to keep it along those lines and i like the fact that they do keep it along those lines thank you for um, i don't even x slave twos in subscribing that, that that's thank that you. thank you for subscribing appreciate it welcome to the family and everything else Tony, uh, yes oh, i gotta get right into it i know you said it in your video and i think a lot of people are thinking the same thing i know it's at the end of the episode but let's get to it at the beginning here sure. so we can talk about it throughout is the new creature at the end that's and you mentioned the bath that's bathing him I know you think so. I I, I, is throwing, it Fatima? Is listen, it, I, don't, I don't know if she's throwing down bath bombs in them. I don't know if she's actually bathing them. I is mean, that I, Fatima I, giving him a ba giving him the Johnson's baby shampoo? Listen, bath? I know a lot of people want to say it's not, but it definitely is. The, sh the shirt was Fatima. very Fatima. It's one hundred percent Fatima. I, 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 I'm telling you, it's him. There's no doubt about it. There's no listen. You gotta look at the way they put together their show. They put her in a shirt that is just about the same shirt that this lady oh, was wearing. Slightly different. A slightly was a different slight design. difference on it, but it was the same exact style and totally. everything else. Totally. Right? They don't just do that. Put her in that shirt to not do it. Tony, you know hair, I mean? like, hair like me. You know, like the, the big curly, uh -huh. big hair. Like just like Fatima and, my, sorry, and myself. The hair was another dead giveaway. Yeah, it's no, it's no doubt that it's her. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and this is what he's dreaming. I, I, we've talked about this before. That it's going, it's going to be a, a situation where there's a, where, where there's a flood, and it's no doubt that Fatima, you know, it looks like, like, like it's definitely a kimono style. But if you look at Fatima, she rocks the kimono style shirts in the show. I mean, Kenny's mom don't rock those. The only one we see rocking the kimono style is Fatima. She has two of them. This one, and she has another color one. And that's just the way it is. So no doubt that this was definitely Fatima. I mean, I could bring the picture up on screen and everything else, but it's her dragging him under. And that that is why it looks like, you know, he seems nervous about it. When you see everything, first time you see him talking to Fatima, and she talks about the proxy, she's over by the Brundles. Next time he's talking to this chick, uh, to Julie, and about what's going on, he's by the pool and there's some water in the pool. Before there yeah. was no water, water in that pool, and now there's water in the pool. There's no doubt that they're setting up that there's going to be a flood, and and it's going to come. The water's going to rise up from the brundles. Now I'm not saying. Listen, there could be creatures in the brundles. There could be creatures, you know, dead bodies laying up underneath there. I, I, I don't know, but there definitely will be a flood in this whole, whole situation. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be a flood, and 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 this is where it's setting up, and people are going to die. So to continue, and we'll talk more about this later, obviously. I'll give a little bit more of my thoughts, but I also kind, kind of think it's Fa Fatima uh, at the end there as well. So we go off to – oh, and with Elgin, when I was talking about last week about the reason why he wanted to jump into action 
isn't just that he's responsible for stealing the food for Sarah, that maybe he's in instinctually had visions of Fatima in the future and, and Elgin at their wedding later at the Brundles that possibly knows that they, they can make it. So that meant when he got that vibe, I can do this. But so either way, there's a lot of stuff going on with Elgin and we look forward to catching up with the actor next week and asking him questions about it. So we go off to Boyd in the next scene, looking outside at an apparent dead smiley nightmare creature. Mari and Kenny and Ellis and Christy and Elgin come along. <laughs> I'll follow them like, let's all, do, 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 do. let's all head outside, see if Smiley's still there. And he's in creature form laying on the ground. They all go look at them. They all look surprised and relieved as Christy is like, wow, you actually killed it. And Fatima says, uh, what should we do? Oh, Kenny says we should burn it. But Boyd says no. Kenny's watched Game of Thrones, obviously, and he wants yeah, to. Burn and, and and Kenny's being a little biatch, right? Right, I, right. I, I, I you think right from the beginning he's being right from the straight beginning. Back. He's up. I mean, to burn it. Listen, Kenny, you don't burn this shit. It's the first time in the history of the show we actually have a chance to do something with one of these creatures. All right. No offense, baby. I'm sorry. But, you know, <laughs> we have a chance to do something with one of these creatures, and you, the first thing is to burn it. No, no, no. We have to open this thing up. We got to open it up and we got to see what's inside so we can know how to kill these motherfuckers. Yeah. It was, it was that's it, the bottom line. It was weird that, or not weird, but it was an interesting take on Kenny's part to immediately go like this. That's why I'm saying I think he maybe he watched too much Game of Thrones. And he looks over to Christy and she says, no, we're bringing it inside. Or, or, or bring it inside and it's like fuck yeah we're bringing it inside opening it open it up and seeing what's inside the thing and kenny's like blah 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 bad idea you're talking about operating on it we don't know what will happen and kenny is talking in this very much the sky is falling kind of tone through it's not even that he's offering alternative perspective tony and to, to your point saying maybe we should stop and think about this for a second is different than the way kenny was doing it kenny was whining yeah, and he was Kenny was going what? Well, well, guys, we don't know what's in it. He wasn't he wasn't just disagreeing or offering alternate perspective. Let's do this in the shed outside instead of bringing it into the house. Because I agree, Let, let's make sure we set it up in a situation where we strap some gasoline on it before we do it. So if anything happens, we can burn. Like there's solutions he could have handled it in a better way, but instead he turns into a little bitch and he's and he's just like, well, well, guys, well, well, well whatever. You gonna put uh, evil into to your house exactly your house. <laughs> exactly he like, but he's like what do you want me to light an incense before we bring it in there exactly. Kenny? and again yeah, it's, 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 i call this bitch assness and then that, that's what that, that was what it was it was bitch assness I'll, and that, that's just the bottom line he was just acting too bitch ass it wasn't kenny i'll co-sign that Tony. I'll, co I'll co-sign the bitch look at me. where you're at and look what you've been going through the whole time you've been there you know and, th and this is what happened this is the problem with kenny He's too much all up in his feelings. He's all mad that this other chick is getting ass and he ain't getting that. Yeah, and, it, and, 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 he's, and he's letting that cloud his judgment. Yeah. Absolutely. And it manifested in a different situation. There were two examples tonight of the age old philosophy coming from the big Lebowski. You may be right, Walter, but you're still an asshole. Kenny might be right, but he was still an asshole. Dale has the same philosophy later, where it's like, Dale, you might be right, but you're still an asshole. You're stabbing people. So uh, so we'll keep an eye on this as we move forward in the in the episode. Boyd puts it on Christy, and Christy's like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're bringing that thing in. And Kenny is flabbergasted. Boyd asks Ellis to head back to Colony House and keep this all quiet, which the secrets don't keep in this town, as we'll see later. Uh, keep it quiet. Uh, we don't want people to find out what happens. And Fatima backs up Boyd, and Christy says, cool, let's get it back. Boyd is pressing Elgin right here, Tony. Mm -hmm. Through this whole scene, Elgin has bad lunch face. And it's not because of the blood. He's, nope. he, he has, they make it a point for Boyd who has a little clairvoyance in the situations to looks him and goes, what the fuck's up, dude? And he's like, nothing, nothing. I just don't like blood or whatever he says. And Boyd just keeps looking at him. Something's up, Elgin. And yeah, yeah Elgin is either seen this before. It seems like the vision Elgin has gotten is of the future. Mm -hmm. It seems like Elgin is, is, is seeing future visions. Everybody else is just seeing these visions. We don't know if they're from the past or whatever it is, but it seems like he's able to see the future Tony, of everything I, going on. That's gonna I have happen. something to present to you. I know we don't usually do theories here, but 
could Elgin be, and and maybe you've thought about something similar to this. So I'm sorry if I'm like, like subconsciously maybe. gobbling one of your theories here. It, could Elgin be something like, like Quaid from Total Recall, where where he is the mole, but he's actually he's he's been deprogrammed to a certain extent and doesn't realize that he should remember the stuff of the bad guy like i don't know if i'm explaining it right could there be some quaid from total recall i guess the best way you could explain that would be you're asking is he the uh the chick from severance yes yeah right. yeah absolutely yes like uh, that. or if this is a severance situation where he's been severed a little bit and he, and he's remember not remembering that he's part of that he's he's the eyes and the ears of the other side some something like that i don't know it's it's just something that flashed through my head watching this episode i, I, I don't i think when it comes down to it there could be multiple molds when it's all said and done but i do think that you have to have somebody in there that's uh that's been there a while yeah so i, I don't i don't think for his age I would say he can't. I don't think he's the mole just because of his age. Okay, it's just it's just something I I, I was thinking about when we mole's going to be someone a little older, you know, just to make it look like they're more of a scientist. I think that that's what it would be. I just feel like there's something there's some duplicity, think, some, some severance like situation going on within well, Elgin. You, you keep saying that it, it's funny because we when we had Scott on the actor who plays Victor, right? We had him on. And the exact words he said came out of him is that Victor remembers is remembering stuff and he's trying to remember stuff that that could be real or could be fake. He's not sure. And wasn't what Elgin was saying in this episode to Julie. We'll get to that scene later, almost echoing. And you mentioned this in your review, too. Uh, and I, I wrote it in mine here. Uh, the it was almost echoing what Victor said, a similar kind of thing, not remembering necessarily if it was real, not I, I'm remember I'm. I feel like I shouldn't remember things. Anyways, we'll we'll get to that in the point. Let's mm -hmm. let's get through a little bit more of this. Uh, Boyd and Chrissy Marie go to bring him in. Kenny tries one more time. Let's stop and talk about this. We're gonna bring some evil in our house. He's like, you're gonna bring. Um, he, this is actually when he does say this. He's like, you're gonna bring evil into your house willingly. Uh, and Chrissy's like, dude, yeah, we got one chance to do this, and we gotta take it. Boyd is like, get the legs. Shut up, Kenny. And Boyd is like, okay. I and mean, that that was a little bit. Listen. A little far fetched to me. Hey, get some sticks and flip the body over. Grab the guy by his clothes, pick him up in the air, and drop him on the fucking thing. I mean, you don't need a stick to go over. You're about to cut the chest open of this thing. You don't need a stick to roll his ass over on some cot. If you want to put him in a blanket and carry him in a blanket, just grab him by his clothes, pull him over there. Listen, I've seen dead deer on the road, and I've grabbed them by their antlers. And pulled it off the side of the road, right? Tony, Tony, it reminds me of a of a comedian. I'm not sure who who said the said the joke, but it talks about how you know. It reminds me how ridiculous it is that before they give you the lethal injection, they use a little alcohol swab to clean your arm. <laughs> I forget whose joke it is. I'm stealing it, but it's the same thing. It's like it doesn't matter at that. You're really thanks. Yeah, who gives a fuck about the alcohol? <laughs> thanks for getting it. Right now, you, swab, you asshole! Like I'd be pissed off. I'd be so annoyed. I don't want the gun. What the fuck is the alcohol? Cody, my do? last request would be like, don't give me the goddamn alcohol swab. I don't want it. <laughs> I I don't know what comedian said that, so I'm stealing a joke. But it's it's somebody else's joke. Uh, so the next scene if anyone knows who told that joke, let me know. It, it might be a George Carlin one or something like that, but I'm not sure. Uh. <laughs> Donna, oh, it is George. It is George Carlin. Thank you, Jake. That's what I thought. It does sound like a George Carlin joke. <laughs> um, so Donna's looking out the window, and uh, and Dale, and she gets she gets a scene with her husband, which is really good. Liz and her husband get to act in the scene. It's a good scene with the two of them. She looks out the window, and Dale is all shocks and goes, "Oh, Dale is going to be all right. I don't know. He's such a swirmy prick. I love this dude." <laughs> He, and he, he's apologizing for accidentally stab, stabbing him. And uh, Donna's like, I don't know what happened. He's like, I'm sorry. And reasonably, like, he seems like this guy's an all right dude somewhere inside. Like he was in a perfect world. He'd be an all right guy. But he's a good kid. Am I going in the box? And Donna's like, I get this what the fuck look on her face the whole time. Dale says, I might have stabbed Ellis. He's a good kid, but I'm not wrong. The bus people are trouble. I noticed the food situation and... 
we're there's going to be some hard choices. And she says, be careful of the hard choices. Do you think, I know you think the flood is coming. Do you think this food thing is going to be an ongoing storyline? No, I, I think that's pointless and everything else. Uh, it, it, even if you, if you do the flood, it wipes the food right off the board anyway, right? So I just think that it, that comes down to yep. what she says later about the soil not being good. But I think the flood will will make everything else and all that go. It's funny. Like, I, uh, if y'all have been watching this channel, we've been doing this from the beginning. You know what I mean? You would know that that was Donna's husband in real life because we've had Donna on in season one back in the day. And we've already discussed it. So people coming up saying it like it's new. Like, you know, that that's Donna's husband. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we yes yeah, we do. Yeah, we did. We've already exposed that. From yeah, he's a he's a, he's a funny guy in person too. That's how you know, like people just jumped on. You know what I mean? It's he's a funny like guy in person, and he he. he really, hinted, we, spoke, we got a chance to speak to him. We spoke to him for like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and he and he hinted to us uh, that he'd be on the season and yeah. uh, and have some business to do and good business. So Donna keeps him locked up and says no one gets in there, and he, she heads out. And then we get a scene. It took me a minute because she wasn't in uniform. We get the bus driver finally out of uniform for him coming up to Donna and being a leader versus a leader here being like somebody he tried to kill us and uh in the and step up kick us out in the middle of the night and uh she says she, and she says uh she talks to me Tony Donna talk Donna straight up Liz throws a line to to Phil Phil the issues guy is Phil's recap review and goes I've heard the recap already stop it <laughs> <laughs> That was specifically for you, know. It was for me. It was for me. That was the thing. Yeah, we had Donna on this season, but we interviewed Donna last year. Mm -hmm. So we, we've interviewed Donna, I think, three times altogether. She's been on the show. So, but we've interviewed her last year and everything else. So we yeah, but we have had her on, and we're gonna bring her back. We, she know she knows that and everything else. Yeah, she, 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 I, I, I want to just jump the gun real quick, Phil. And you know, we have the death list, right? And I'm gonna have to put her back to number one. Oh, you're putting her back to number one. Oh, okay. I, I am. I'm putting her back to number one. The, all, all these, uh, all these Aunt May lines are very it's too much. It's too much. There was another one tonight. Another Aunt May line. Yes, it's too much of her being too motherly. That and it's just. I feel like when they start doing this stuff, that they do it to 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 take a person out. And I don't think that she's gonna. I think she's gonna sacrifice herself if she goes out. She's yeah. not going to get killed. Like she'll get killed for everybody else. Or Dale will do something stupid to get her killed. But uh, but Donna has. Uh, and Tony mentioned it in the uh, in his his uh, review this week, which is a line I also never heard before. Which I think is another great Spider Man Aunt May kind of line that uh, a miracle is on this side of uh, of a disaster, whatever it is. I have it written down later. We'll get to that later. So uh, Donna says. Pro Donna comes in and locks up and uh, promises the fuckwad in the in the other room was standing. You're one of our people now. Bus people are our people. I'll take care of everyone. Ellis and Fatima show back up at home and Donna helps them upstairs. Off to the Matthews and jerk off Jim tonight. We have, we have we have so so much attention to douchebag Kenny or to uh, to, to, to to Kenny's a bad mistake. Bad Marie. That's Jim bad Marie. Jim was a jerk off tonight yeah, and Jimbo, uh Jimbo didn't do a good job no 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 J Jim was Jim was Jim a uh, bad look for Jim tonight so go off to the Matthews breakfast Tony and uh Kenny's mom's there she yells she yells at Ethan leave my stone al stove alone Ethan wants to learn how to meet the make the uh, pancakes he also wants to see Victor but Jim says no uh and this is almost echoing the Sarah situation and Julie's like no I'll take him and Tabitha's like okay you can go and and Jim immediately is like can we talk outside? <laughs> and, ta and, ta and, and douche Jim is like, it, he doesn't even, again, like Kenny, he doesn't bridge this in a reasonable conversation. He immediately starts a fight and says, can you, I have a question for you, Tony. What the hell is wrong with you? You know, it's like, it's like you, don't, <laughs> you don't start a fight, a conversation like that. No, if, if he wanted to have that conversation with his wife and he wanted to say the same thing, what you say is, you say, babe, you know, we got to have a united front here, girl. 
You know, you started off like that, and you you be nice on it. You know what I mean? You don't just tell them, "What the fuck are you doing?" You like, "Babe, we need to have united front up on here, babe." And she be like, "What? What do you mean?" And say, "Listen, when I'm when I'm saying something, and you go in there, you don't go in there like you're some mafia don." Yeah, you know and what he, I mean. He was, he was, he was too like much, that. Tony. And I'm not saying he was 100 percent wrong in everything he's saying or the stuff that he's trying to dig on. I'm just saying that Jim is a little bit gets a little bit full of himself and makes decisions without always thinking things through and can get a little bit pig-headed and doesn't always listen to other people and think about the whole thing before it's over with. He's been called on it by Donna, he's been called on it by other characters too. Boyd kind of uh, held him off. And I think we'll get to it a little bit later. Telling Randall everything, the way Randall was sort of cataloging all that information was scaring me, Tony. Because yeah. it looked Why like Randall was setting up a coup. Like he was setting yeah. up a coup. Why would you trust Randall? What has he ever done to make you want to trust this dude? This dude just called you basically a pedophile. Yeah. In your face, like, yo, I ain't trying to go off in the woods with you. Cause I think you might try to hit me up the butt because you look like one of these guys who hang out in parks with little kids. Yeah, it's really yeah exactly. It, isn't it? Isn't it ironic? Don't you think that that's what he's saying about Victor? And, and do you know what's annoying about Jim? Again, you could be right, Walter, but you're still an asshole. Everything he's saying, okay, Jim immediately starts to fight. He's like, what's wrong with you? When I say uh, no calling your house means no fucking calling your house. She's like, well, two days ago, you said, Sarah, you made a decision, and I agreed it was the right thing, and I'm okay with it. You know, like, so we don't want our kids sneaking out and doing things. You know, we got to, like, know where they are. And Jim calls Victor an emotionally stunted freak, and he uh, and she's like, the emotional stunted freak saved Julie and saved me, and this is where Jim gets annoying. But is that just what they wanted you to think? And then, <laughs> and then, and then she tells him about the tunnels, and he says, "Is that what you wanted me to think?" And it's just so, <laughs> Tony. It's just so stupid. It's so it bad is. way to handle it, dude. And I, let me explain it like this. Let me put it to you like this. Bad. I, I I have said from the beginning. You know, I have theories, and I have said from the beginning that this is been dealing with aliens here, right? I told that from the beginning. But every time I put a theory out there, if some other evidence comes in, I'll add that to a theory and say, this is what's there. Like, I'm not so pigeonholed into what I'm seeing that I can't see the forest through the, through the trees, right? That's what Jim is starting to be like, it seems like to me, you know what I mean? It seems like he's just sitting there and he's so deep into what he's looking at. He's not looking at everything else. Yeah, he's not. Twice, he's, yep. Yeah, twice he's been told. Now, how did you know they're human? He was told by Donna, how do you know the voice was human? And now his wife has told him, how do you know the voice is human? And it's like it's still not sticking in his head that that's the case because he's just so stuck on what he believes and stuff. He's like, oh. what, he's like, what else could it be? And she's like, I don't know. That's what's terrifying. But now it's pancake time. If you want to join me and stop being a dick, yeah, you want to have some pancakes. pancakes and listen to damn pancakes. Let's you know, I, I'm everyone knows I'm Kenny's stepfather, right? And my girl is making them pancakes and stuff and everything else. But you know, I, I have to say that it, all it, all respect. If if he doesn't want to have pancakes with Tabitha, I'll go have some pancakes with Tabitha. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You know what I mean? But no it, disrespect. No disrespect. But uh, but I'll happily sit down and have some pancakes. No doubt. No doubt about it. I just think that well, I don't know what's up in them pancakes. Instead, J instead Jade has some pancakes. We'll get to that in a second here. So uh, so then we get to uh, right at that point, a drone flies by Jim's head, his gigantic narcissistic head, and almost hits him. And uh, we go off to them bringing the body of Smiley in and they're all looking down and Boyd is like, and what you need, Chrissy? And she's like, I need some saws and some gloves. And uh, Boyd starts control organizing the situation and uh, asks, tells Kenny to go see what the mom's got in the sh and go to the shed. And we get a great shot that they focus on for a while of dead Smiley's face in the makeup or the CG. It just looks really. It looks really good. The really guy's good. nails look like he's snatching rivers from the pond. Yeah. I does. mean, the, the nails are disgusting, but he had the exact same nails that we seen of Martin, right? Yep. Those are the same nails that Martin scratched Boyd's ass with and drew blood, right? So we have to draw a conclusion that somehow that they're the same, 
uh, type of situation is going on with both of them, but maybe one experiment has failed and one thing is, has gone. Now, Tony, we get to another Kenny interruption, and this is the first interruption that Kenny makes sense, but it's my point. No one can hear you now, Kenny, because you've just been crying and wet and whinging as uh, as and I'm about to play my uh, hound sound drop in a second here. But uh, Kenny's like, dude, you had worms. You put it in this thing. And, and now we're cutting it open. What if the worms come out? Gloves aren't going to help us. What happened to the worms? And it's a good damn question. And Boyd is like, what the fuck, Kenny? Stop being a bitch. And then, uh, and then right, this is an intense moment where right at that point, Mari runs out in bed and has some. And I'm going to say it like this, Tony, because. I don't even know if this is really what's happening with her right now. I know we know she's going through withdrawals, but I'm going to say she has some withdrawal symptoms because she might have been infected with something else in this moment right now, too, that we don't know about that we'll get to a little bit later. No, we're not even get to it. She got infected by some worms. She has the dreams. Some shit's going on with her. Let's put it all, let's put it in perspective right now. And I'm going to say this stuff and other people may take this theory. That Tainted I'm morphine. Out. Tainted morphine had the Tainted. worms in it. 100%. Really? The morphine. She took that morphine. Really? She took the morphine. That's the only thing we could see. All of a sudden she's having dreams and shit with the same music box. That morphine could have been tainted. This chick Tilly could have came in there dirty and put that stuff in the morphine. And yes. that's why we see that. That's why I asked Christy that. That's what I'm thinking. Tony. I asked Take her straight up when she came on this channel. I asked, I tried to, get, to sneak it in there with her. And I said, did she spit up that bile? Was that bile in her? And then she was like, oh, you know, every time you, you throw up, there's bile in it. But it was extremely yellow. And that's why I put, that's why I asked her this. I was trying to get her to say something, you know, sneakily. That's what I do. You know what I mean? But, you know, but it seemed very yellow. So I think that it, she could have had some worms up in her ass. It could Maybe be some situation. So. In there. Uh, so they're off to bring, okay. And Kenny's like, what about these worms? And anyway, so Mari runs into the bed and such and withdrawal symptoms or something else. Boyd comes in and asks what up. And Chrissy is like, she's throwing up withdrawals. Boyd is like, can I help? And she says, yeah, get me some fuck, get me a saw and some gloves. I don't want this thing in here any longer than it has to be. Kenny and Boyd nod and uh, they're on the same page for a second. But Kenny does have some snuff all up in his up, I guess. Like, Ken, like Kenny, Kenny's doing it, but he's 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 he's, he's, he's got the snuff. Oh, no. hey, hey, bird, a oh, bird, bird. Oh, I'm, okay. okay, Tony. I'm, I'm oh, sick. Oh. I'm sick, bird. Okay, Thanks, Tony. Bird. I'll do the recap. Okay, I'll get to the next section. Okay, bird. I'm sick. I want some smack, bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, worms up his worms up his butt, Scott. So Kenny goes to the shed to grab the saw very reluctantly, but still awkwardly. Tony. So he goes off. So we go off to Jim and Randall, and they. This is a fun conversation. This is Randall's best scene so far in the show. He comes in for a fun chit chat about the drone, how much it can carry, and and uh, helping in the basement of the house. Uh, Randall's re reaction was priceless. He pauses and goes, "Oh, you're welcome," but. You know, since your wife wasn't there, you kind of got those two guys killed for nothing. That was nice. <laughs> I mean, he says it. It's the truth, too. But the way he says it, too, Tony, he's so deadpan matter of fact. Yeah, he's an asshole. You know what I mean? It's a difference between dicks and assholes. Oh, he's an asshole. He's, he's an a, asshole. He's, he's a straight asshole. asshole. It's no he's Louis De Palma from Taxi. He wants to say the thing. To, but, and Jim, in, in fairness, Jim's kind of an asshole. Cause, and Jim turns him, does that make you feel good? You feel like a man now? <laughs> well, how come Jim didn't say that to Kenny when Kenny broke Sarah's fucking little thing? You feel like a man now, Kenny? You, you feel like a man now, Kenny? Crystal, it took a lot. You took a little crystal doll and you smashed it. You feel like a man now, Kenny? You know, say that to Kenny. Why don't you say that to Kenny? You know what I mean? And all that. But that that's the way it is. But, you know, uh, but he's definitely a straight asshole. Right now. Niza, Niza says, uh, that's mold talk, too. So Jim respects the look. He's like, damn, you're cold. He smiles, you feel good. Fun dialogue. Buddy, fuck off. Back and forth. Randall gives some sass. Jim asks for some help. Randall gives some more sass. Uh, very Sawyer-ish, if you know what I mean. Finally, Jim is like, what the hell's wrong? Basically, uh, he's he, he, Jim's like, come with me for a second here. And he's like, what? why do you want me to come with me? This, this joke almost didn't work on me, but it ended up being funny. Where he's like, 
He's like, uh, what do you want me to do? Help you find your dog? And Jim's like, what? And he goes, you know, help you find your dog because you're like a pedophile or something. One of those creepy dudes in the in the park or something. And then Jim gives him this look like, what? You're just an asshole. And and Randall's like, yeah, I know. Like he gives this look like, yeah. You know, like Jim's hair is. How does he keep it that wet the whole time? Like, what is he getting? Is it moose that keeps it? I, I, it's I'm so black, so man. Good, so I don't understand good. everything, right? I don't understand hair like this. You know, I, you know, I'm from a different era. I'm a black man, and that's it. Yeah, I had a flat top when I was younger and everything else, a slope and all that good stuff. How does he keep his hair so slicked back like this? His hair is constantly wet. You know what I mean? It's always wet. It, it, it's a gel. It's that's gel. Cool. I, think it's, I think it's a wet gel of some well, sort. Where is he getting this gel from, Jim? Jimbo. <laughs> He brought enough hair stuff, uh, hair tonic, hair hair lube, uh, because he was on vacation. A guy like Jim always has to have that, Tony. <laughs> you don't leave home without that. Jimbo's hair slipped back. It looks like those little kids that are all wet that keep chasing Tabitha. Did you hear some <laughs> some people call him Paul Dud because they think he's like Paul Rudd? <laughs> But Jim's not coming on. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jim's not, Jim, we don't think we're getting Kenny. We're definitely going to get Jim. But no, I, I would I would love to talk to the actor who played Jim. I think he's playing this. Too. He's th he's playing this kind of character really well. Uh, this like off putting narcissistic kind of character. But uh, and he's in him with Randall is an interesting playoff because you're dealing with two people like this. Randall gives him so Randall he Jim starts selling him his bag of goods. He's like, what if that drone can get you get uh, you home before your nephew's birthday. So we go off to Victor counting, see if the trees moved and Ethan comes up to him and more just genuine kid kind of interaction uh, where Victor's kind of mean to him. And he's like, don't be mean to me. We're friends. And Victor's like, I'm trying to protect you. Stay away from me. Bad things happen to my friends. And Ethan is like, Tony, I've asked this question so many times of people in my life. If we're friends, why can't we spend time together? If we're friends, let's be friends. You know those friends that just they never actually want to spend yeah, time with you. Yeah. I've said that to many women. Like if you know if we're friends, why can't we just sleep in the same bed? Mm -hmm. You know the friends do that. It's nothing wrong with that. Don't you know? I've said it many times, so I understand. I know, I know they're not using the same context that I'm using it, but yes, you know what I mean. We're friends. You got to spend time together oh, and everything. Just, together. I just think that he oh, gets sorry. to him a little bit and he and he eats away at him to the point where. You know, Victor, it's it's like a it's like two kids on on fourth grade. Totally. Oh, dude, it's it's so like two kids with fourth grade. It's it's so perfect. And uh, Justin says Kenny's mom had a case of Soul Glow in the storage. That's Listen, that's he, how that's that's I how uh, Jim's I, doing I, it. I told y'all that that's my wife, right? I mean. I'm Kenny's stepdad, so leave my woman alone. Man. So, so don't, don't hijack, don't hijack the uh, the warehouse. So Ethan is like, I've asked these questions oh so many times in my life. So Victor agrees uh, because you can see him sort of make the realization in his mind. And some people might say this was a mean thing to say to Ethan, but you can see the tone of Victor changed. This was not a go away. I don't want to talk to you bad vibe. This was you saying to your best friend, your toys suck. Your orange was dry. When he goes, your orange was dry. That was his his olive branch. And he noticed that Ethan didn't get it. Ethan sheepishly said, I'm sorry, and walked off. And then Victor's like, oh, I got to try harder. I need help measuring. Come over here. Like, But when he said, when Victor made the kid decision to be like, the orange was dry, that was his way of saying, you're my friend again. Well, I'm, I'm not highlighting comments tonight because it makes it pause. But Micah, I want you to highlight my girl, Micah Lee, in the building. Mika, I'm sorry, Micah. Shit, I keep up. Mika, love you, Mika. Thank you for yeah, being here. Rocking Mika, if Thank we you can... everyone. Let me just say some names just because I'm not highlighting them. So let me just call you, give you the shots. Big Daddy's up in the building. Where it's one of Tim R is in here. Jesse's in here. Star's up in here. You know what I mean? Uh, let me check my the cash app thing. I haven't looked it at Mika. Mika. Mika, I'll look at it. Yeah, right and now. I have to say, Mika Lee, for all the support. If we if we had, if Tony and I each for both of our channels and all of our stuff had had a hundred Mika Lees for all the support she puts out there and uh, and sharing our stuff and promoting the word, we'd she be, said, uh, we'd be crazy lucky. Sick, Thank uh, you for all the support, Chloe. I'm so I'm sorry that you missed her. You know, normally uh, they would stay, people would stay, but she was at a concert and everything else. But she will be back on. And then, all right, and I'm going to say this real quick. 
should should I talk about a little bit of that real fast when we talked about off air? Uh we can wait till wait till the end and talk about it a little bit. All right. And well at the end I will have an announcement to make at the end about her and stuff like that. So uh yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we we should we should save that until you know, like once once things start uh, coming together. But but uh, but yeah, we'll make an annou- make an announcement about that toward towards the end. Stick around for a special announcement yeah. at the end of the show. Uh, so uh, Victor says the orange is dry, and e- Ethan and him are friends again. So we go off to Mari and Christy, and she's taking good care of Mari, and she tells her to go do her thing. Boy shows up. And he's trying to put an ace bandage on and Chrissy talks to him and wraps him up and he reassures her that Mari, Mari will be okay. And we get back, we get the story. Uh, Mari was sober for a year when they met. Chrissy is blaming herself because she, she became uh, addicted again when she was away. And Boyd's like, listen, this is not on you. And she's like, no, I didn't even realize she was going through withdrawals because I was obsessed with this thing. Kenny might be right. Uh, we don't know what's going on here and I'm scared. Are you scared? And I think they put this scene in here, Tony, for basically what we've been saying this whole show that Kenny is not wrong. It's his approach. It's, it's his approach. Like Kenny being cautious about breaking this thing open is smart. I'd be cautious about it too. You should be cautious, but you can't not do it. There's not there's not a chance on earth. An Independence freaking day. Horrible movie. When you capture one of them, what's the first thing you do? You get data from Star Trek in there to rip that thing. He died when the thing came back to life. But you got to try to do it. It's Listen, the only if, way. If you step on a landmine, right, and someone comes in there and says, listen, I'm going to try to dissect it. It's not smart to do it. But the only other option is if you move your foot, you're going to both blow up, right? Yep. You have a situation here right now where – it's not smart. Is it the smartest thing to do? No, but we have to. We're in a position where we have no choice but to try to take the initiative. We have been hiding no and choice. cowering from these things for so long. One time we need to go on offense, and now we have the opportunity. This motherfucker dead. We know he's been dead. He's been laying outside for hours. So now it's time to bring him up in here. And if he was going to jump up and grab us, he would have already did it. Yep. We were all out there. Even Ellis dragged his stabbed ass out there. Why did Ellis go outside? You just got stabbed with, with a knife. All, and not nice. The butt of the knife, the tang, was all the way in his chest. Yeah, dude. All that that was a little and, bit and of knife. It, it was a whole knife. Oh, and, look. dude, I, I've heard a few people say, oh, well, you know, a knife can't go that. Dude, chef knives, the like Gordon Ramsay chef knives, a like Ginsu knife, that shit that can cut through cans. That those can knives can bricks, Ginsu. Yeah, those <laughs> knives can kill them, kill them, motherfucker, quick. Dude. I'm from a generation where I know there's sharper knives and better brands, but I'll never because of those commercials, Tony. And I don't want to go too much of a real rabbit hole. The Ginsu knife, like no, I'm not fucking with Ginsu. That damn Ginsu knife. Yeah, dude. <laughs> if I, if someone comes to me and says to me, like, that's the knife. Fight, I got a Ginsu. I got a Ginsu now. I'm going. I'm running. I'm right fighting with you, no damn Ginsu. Dude, it's like Mick Dundee pulling that, pulling that. That's a knife. That's not a knife. Yeah, yeah, that's no, a knife. Yeah, Ginsu. That, it's, it's that name. Ginsu. That shit cuts yeah. through everything. Dangerous I, shit. Speaking of dangerous shit, uh, we go off to another great scene. Here we go after that, where we, uh, where where we finally get the return of Jade. I know it's only been an episode, but Jade's such a good character that when we when we when he's not there, we miss him and we got a lot of really awesome Jade tonight. Now, a lot of times I'll try to write down the dialogue of what a character says. Jade talks too quick and too funny, but he had so many great one-liners in this episode. It's a bar. Uh, you don't have to knock on the door. So he's trying to figure out how to make booze that doesn't taste like stomach acid. Rest in peace to Tom. That's such a kicking up, kicking dirt on Tom's grave there, Tony. It's like, it's like yeah, all his alcohol sucks. It, it, it did, but he drank and uh, Listen, I talked about it in my thing earlier. In one of my videos, I said, someone's going to have to take over the bar. And I told everyone it was going to be Jade. I yeah. told you, I said, Jade's the only one that we've seen in the bar. A bar is a very important place in town, any town you go to. That's where you exchange information. And that's what the bar is. And boom, there you have it, Jade. Tony, I, I, I don't want to, besides Boyd, because it's it's almost like 
in certain groups, you have to like take out a member to judge who your favorite is. Besides Boyd, because Harold Perrineau, uh, Oz is my favorite show of all uh, at the table, sitting at the sh- the the top table of my favorite shows of all time. So it's hard not to give it to Harold. But other than Harold, Jade might be my favorite character. But I he's just. He's, I just love every goddamn scene with him. Uh, Tony, please just, dis- and Phil, please discuss the drawings we saw in Ellis's rooms there 24 minutes into episode seven. Lots of interesting stuff. Fatima as a nightmare creature and a Bigfoot. Uh, I did not see a stuff. Why do you gotta call it a Bigfoot, man? Sasquatch. Fatima ain't no damn Bigfoot, man. Why you gotta call it a Bigfoot? All right, so I, I, I'll discuss it because I've seen what you're saying. I don't know if we've seen her as a nightmare creature. It's two pictures right above the bed. It's a drawing by Ellis. Both drawings are by Ellis, but not by Victor. So I think that you have to start re- looking at what pictures are by Victor and what, what pictures are by, uh, are by Ellis that he's painting, right? It's two different drawings. There's actually three drawings in that room of Fatima. There's two of them above the bed, and there's one on the left-hand side of the bed that's right there. So it's hard to say that it's her as a nightmare creature. It does look like it. I can understand why you would think, it, but it doesn't look like that's what he was going for. And I understand maybe the, the, the showrunners did put that there like that, uh, but it wouldn't go with the end scene that that's Fatima as a corpse. Yeah. Drowning this dude. So 100%, if you want to look at it like that and everything else, I, I I was I will I will say that you're right. And Susan, and, well, I, Susan Mick uh, McIntyre says it. I totally remember you saying Tony that Jade was taking him about. I told you he was gonna. Do yeah, it. you you did. And Jade is amazing. I just want to comment on one thing. Just Gina says Ellis is the Miles Edward O'Brien of from. I, I hope so. Thank you for the Deep Space Nine reference. Uh, I don't know if that's because I have Miles on the wall behind me, but I'll take it. So uh, Jade is just great in this scene. Tony, uh, he's figuring out the booze. He's hysterically asking for help with figuring out the pr- figuring out this project that will not scare the living f out of him he uh but but tabitha who's also equally awesome in this scene she has questions this is the scene that people have been wanting for no the next scene with them is the scene people have been wanting for a while but it's leading up to this uh she says when you found me you were not surprised to see me freaking out and he quickly tells her well your husband found me like that i was running from a civil war soldier and i told him to fuck off help me with the booze and you'll get more uh, so we go off to Jim and Randall. Jim is selling his yarn to Randall about the radio. And I mentioned this earlier, Tony. Randall seems to be dangerously taking notes to my eyes. Everything he's saying, he's chronicling. Oh, like, oh, yeah, you, you, you heard a voice? No one's saying anything? Oh, this, that, another thing? Okay, 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 okay. Jim takes Randall to the RV. They get the antenna there. And he needs to get the drone. I get it. You need the drone higher. Okay, you can do that. Randall uh, brings up the uh, – he says – it's, you know, I don't think you're crazy. You're one of the sanest people I've met here. Uh, or the, you're finally making sense, but no one's brought up the obvious question. Uh, what if there's a, the mole? What That if this is a big test, you think, there's got to be people keeping you honest in it. Now, is that people that are saying Randall's the guy? Is that something the guy would say? I, I don't know. I don't think Randall's the guy. I think Randall is. Not is the guy. You, you, yeah, you don't bring that up, mole, if you're the mole. Right. right. But I you do know, think, you're a spy I do think, in another country, and you're always like, "What about there's a spy?" You yeah. don't bring that up. You don't. You, if you're stealing something, you don't bring up stuff about thieves. You leave. You sweep that shit under the rug and everything else, right? You're that's right. I stole it. Yeah, it's in my pocket right now. Yeah, Check that, it that's out. Right now. Is, you know, you, you don't. You don't do that shit. You know what I mean? And everything else. You, and, if, you're and, cheating, if you're if you're cheating with your best friend's wife. You don't bring up the fact that hey, maybe she's cheating on you. <laughs> she, oh, she looks, she looks good. Yeah. Have you ever thought your wife might be cheating on you? Uh, the Tim R. No, you rock, mother, mother. In the, I was gonna call you mother effer, but you rock, mother, mother. Okay, so, uh, so, so Jim says you think I'm crazy. Okay, so then we go off to uh, okay, Jim will help him. Jimmy's a co- Jim's a cocky dude that already got people killed. Let's see how many more. Pe- people uh, as i put my own agenda in the recap jim's a cocky dude he's already got people two people killed let's see how many more people jim gets killed before the end of the season tony over under three people how many more over do you take the over or under there that jim gets it scares three me. number one thing that scares me is that the lot of stuff that jim is saying is what i came up with 
which is gonna make scares me that I'm wrong. Yeah, that that they're that they're, <laughs> that they're making Jim out to be the uh, tinfoil guy. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really nervous. Tinfoil Jim. In, in the beginning, when when Jim said, it, I was like, damn, I must be on to something. I said, it, Jim said it. Now I'm thinking, fuck, Jim said it. <laughs> like, yeah, well, everything Jim says. Everything I'm gonna have Jim to eat this Jim on this show. motherfucker. God damn it, Jim, you fucking me up. <laughs> okay, two things in the live chat. Over or under, do you say Jim kills more or less than three people? And I want you in the live chat, name Jade's bar. What what is what will Jade name his bar in the live chat? Well, yeah, let's, let's... what would he name his bar? What, what would... Someone said it. Someone some Coco Moody says name it the drunken place. Uh, <laughs> someone says less than. Okay, so uh, probably less than less than three. But I'm saying the over under on Jim killing three people. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I would say over. You're saying over. over you're saying yeah, Jim over. kills over. Yeah, three. He's, he, he's gonna get Randall killed. He's fucking with Randall. He's gonna get Randall killed and somebody else killed. Yeah, so we're going to see you over on the front. Okay, so our next scene is Ellis, Fatima, and Julie to remind everyone that they're th they're all still friends and Julie's welcome in the Colony House to remind us of storylines. Well, someone said, we've got to go through the names before they go away. Uh, people are saying Turd Water, The Nutcracker, Under on Jim, uh, and someone said The Boom Boom Room. The bar is the assless hole. The assless hole. I like that one. The escape room. Uh, I, the bomb. You know, he would name it, John Henderson says he would name it fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to accept a bunch because they were getting blocked by the filter. <laughs> that <is> because, <laughs> great names. Jaded is good. Jaded. Jaded is a good name for a Yeah, Jaded department. is good. Jaded is good. That's Realistically, good. The, and everybody, I see that we have a few voicemails. If you want to call in, in right now, as soon as we're done with the recap, we'll get to the voicemails. We'll even we'll play the all, ones. I promise you we'll get them all done. Yeah, and we'll even play the ones that were meant for uh, Chloe, uh, and we'll pretend, we'll answer as she would have answered. Well, I, I just, uh, we, and we talked to her, I got a good perspective. We we talked to her for 20 minutes before we started. I really wish we just started right when yeah. she joined, because we had a really <laughs> amazing pre-show conversation. <laughs> With really her. Did, really <laughs> no, no, really. She's Listen, she's mad cool. Man. She's for like real, she's man. really she's really awesome people. Like really she awesome. Really people. She's mad cool. Like I, I get, we can hang out with her in the bar. And just yeah, we 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 we, we, we had a really fun as as fun as it was having her on stream. I wish you guys could have seen the pre-show discussion we had with her. It was really really good time. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, sorry, Ellis Ellis uh, Fatima and Julie remind everyone that they're still friends. Ellis tells Julie she's always welcome there. And Julie leaves as Donna shows up. Donna gives some food and they talk a little bit about the food shortage, but don't worry about it. She says, sorry. And Ellis has uh, that she's responsible for what happened with Dale. And Ellis has a great response. He's like, yeah, it's your fault for uh, an accidental stabbing by a douchebag person stabbing me. It's totally your fault, Donna. Sure. Great reaction. Yeah, she give her pancakes. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and she tells them, uh, you guys did good, and he gives them uh gives them it the this again here just makes me think another scene of Donna when they start showing a person the much as they show the motherliness what, what he's of her. doing, there's a problem. Wait a second, 397 watching 192 likes is not acceptable. Yeah, bring bring it up. Bring it up right now. You, you got you got to bring it up. Come on. We, we, we got to bring that up. Let's do. I know we we know we got some people watching that aren't subscribers, but make sure you subscribe so you can join in the chat. Hit that hit that push that button. Keep keep go, doing this. Let's keep getting Teflon TV as big as we can get it here. Uh Phil and Tony, did you notice Donna tells Fatima and Boyd they're evil trees, the traps. How did she know that I went back and looked at all the episodes in season? Boyd did not tell her that. Interesting point. 613. You said what? Uh, the the scene we'll we'll get to it later in the scene with um I'll, I'll make note of that later six one three because I do talk about it in the notes in the right. scene later when uh, Dawn is talking to Fatima she mentions the faraway trees and we right, did, real, didn't real actually quick. Uh, real quick so we will talk about we will talk about it, but uh, Michael Parker says that the mole is either Victor or Fatima yep. thank you for the super chat uh, I I don't think it's Victor yes Fatima no. I think if it's Victor, it's what I was saying earlier that Victor, so that Victor's being controlled without his knowledge necessarily. But I, I said Fatima last season. I don't think it's her, but I'm sticking with it just because I called her last season. So, I, so, so, right. so, uh, so in case I'm in case I'm right, I'm sticking with that flyer. Listen, it, it, 
if it's sponsored, man, we'll go through it real quick. We'll, we'll go through the. I know we do the theories at the end, but we'll, we'll go through it real quick if we said it. If it's Fatima, then we're dealing with some type of witchcraft. We're dealing with some type of of, of worship, of a cult type yeah. worship, where she is the mother and she's going to give birth to this demon spawn. Obviously, we have a show that's called Belly of the Beast. That would mean to me, I know they, they stabbed this dude in the chest and the stomach and the bile came out and that's what makes it seem like it. But if you want to deal with Fatima, then you would say the belly of the beast would be that her child in her belly, she's the beast. Mm -hmm. And this child in her belly is what's going on, right? So mm -hmm. I, that's what it would be if it's going to be Fatima. That's what it's going to be. It's going to deal with things like that. Sonic says there's no mole, and Vic says who says there can't be more than one mole. So, and both those situations are possible. I know that the creators have hinted at a mole, and they get that line in tonight's episode uh, from Randall. But it, that could all be a red herring in some ways as well. So we go back to we go off to Elgin, who's still very off looking. Uh, he has a quick interaction with Julie, where they have another little quick flirt, and uh, we got to stop meeting like this on the porch. And he wants to talk to her, and they go on a walk. So we go back to Autopsy Central, and Boyd says, "How can he help?" And Chrissy has a very funny line: "Well, you can catch me if I fall." Excuse me, Kenny doesn't find this funny. And we get a cl another close up on Smiley Smiley's face as we get our one of our jump scares of the night that got me, Tony. I watched this at. Uh, let me tell you quickly, per quick personal story of last night. I was playing Zelda at like 9 30, 10 o'clock. I put it down for a second. I sort of dozed off on the couch, woke up at like 11 45 and turned on the episode at, at midnight. So I was like half awake, half asleep watching it. So uh, all these jump scares really got me, especially the end of the episode. I had a nightmare about the end of the episode. That was tough to watch at the end of your night. Uh, anyways, so I had a huge jump scare as she cuts into Smiley as Smiley moves. Uh, did you. Did that did that jump scare get you, Tony? And did you think that was Smiley coming back alive at all? I, 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 all right. So and truthfully, nothing's gonna get me happy. No, you're, I, you're not me. It, it's it's and I wish it, I I understand the effect and it did a great job at it, but there's nothing anyone could do to really scare me like that. I'm not a, you know it just doesn't work like that. I mean I've been to a, a billion you know like like a, a horror parks. Like I've been to like uh, haunted hay rides. Yeah, you're you're the, you're the guy that's just like fuck you. You're like my no, cousin. If you, if you touch me, I'm gonna hit you. Yeah. I'm like like don't touch, put your hands on me. You're like, like those you dudes that grab you through the holes in the floor. Out, you can do all that, and I laugh at you. But if you actually put your hand on me, I'm a I'm gonna hit you. You know, <laughs> it's just, that's just the reflex. <laughs> that's just my reflex. You know what I mean? And I love those things. I, I'd rather go on those than anything else. But. I don't get scared, and things, but I thought it was a good, I understand what they were trying to do. And for the average person, I think they did a great job with the jump scares in this. In this yeah, th this, de this definitely got me. I'm just imagining some amazing like viral video of someone trying to do a surprise party or, or some sort of surprise on you where someone touches you from behind, like, like your hero, like uh, Roy, Roy Jones Jr. shows up there, like on your birthday, someone gets in, enjoy, he like taps you on the shoulder and you turn around and, and hit him nice. without thinking about it and shit. Yeah, I would hit him. I'm sorry. Hey, you can't put your hands on me. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, Roy. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be upset if it was Roy. But I, you know, I'm, if I'm Queens, New York, I'm from a different situation. This doesn't happen with it. You know what I mean? It's just with the way it goes and stuff. So I just, I just, I just can't have anything like that. Jump you, can't put your hands, you can't put your hands on me. Man. And then Roy's like, Are, aren't you the guy that stole my girlfriend back in back in 2002? Yeah, I am that guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. Back to back on topic. So we go back up to the autopsy, and Boyd says, <laughs> "Sorry, uh, Boyd says, uh, uh, catch me.' Or she says, catch me if I fall. There's a huge jump scare here, and uh, Smiley moves as she cuts him. And Kenny's okay. Kenny's screaming here. Tony reminded me of of Boromir in the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Rings movie when they're in the mines of Moria. We shouldn't have come here." Like his voice, <laughs> his voice cracks and stuff like, like <laughs> you shouldn't have done this. This is bad. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It just, it's totally like, if you listen it back, think about, I almost, I, I might have to do a, a 
quick edit where I put Kenny's voice in that scene in the Lord of the Rings where where we shouldn't have come here. He's like he's just like we shouldn't have cut this thing open. Oh my goodness. No, no, we're, we're wrong. I told you it's bad. It's been bad right this now. This is bad. Wow. This wow. is which this is witchcraft I tell you. And I'm, I'm be honest about this real quick. I'm, be honest, I'm, I'm with Kenny, God damn it. He's lucky he's not with this. He can't handle this girl. He wouldn't be able to handle her, Kenny. I, you know, I'll be honest. I'm drinking right now, so and I'm feeling it. Oh but, yeah, no, we're, we're having a good. T- this is our party. Yeah, now. we're having mm-hmm. a really good time right now. And listen, Kenny, Kenny couldn't handle this chick. He he's lucky she doesn't want him because he's just going there and embarrass him. And I'm not talking about the actor. I'm talking about the. Uh, Exactly. We, we have we have not, nothing but yeah, Ricky. That's mad course, but Ricky's yeah, mad Ricky. Course. Ricky. Ricky. We would love to have Ricky yeah, on. Understand? Rick- yeah, we love to have. Him. We're talking about. When I talk about this. I'm talking about the goddamn person that he's portraying. This Kenny, the oh, high water wearing dude. He ain't gonna be able to handle that ass. It's be too much for him. Oh. It's be too much for him. It would. It would just be embarrassing if he would embarrass himself. <laughs> and that would just be the end to Kenny. It would. You know. Oh. He doesn't look like he's a, you know, like he's like he's holding it down. So yeah, Kenny, Kenny just has his uh, has his Boromir moment. We should not have come here, and uh, we should not do this. We can't do this. And then I love Boyd in this. I, I just I love the way Harold plays Boyd with so little patience, and he just turns to Kenny like Kenny, shut the fuck up here like stop stop downing chrissy's confidence here because basically if you're freaking out like this you're getting in the way of the doctor doing the doctor business and it's just this big shut up kenny kind of moment and kenny bounces out and has a tantrum and and boyd is about to go after him and chrissy has one of uh Chloe has one of the best line reads as Chrissy I've ever heard in my life, where she just goes simultaneously angry, annoyed with love and frustration and humor in the way that only you and you've and everyone's been in this situation. Your best friend just caused a big fucking scene of some situation and there's and you're the only one that can handle it. And everyone else is trying to talk and you're like, I got this. I got this. And the way she says, I got this as she's walking off, it, Tony, it's with like so much frustration, but, but like, but yeah, I got this. This is good. I guess I got to have this conversation with Kenny now. And I don't think she thought it was going to be that conversation, but she goes after him. Let's get this over with. And then we'll, then I'm going to pass this over to Tony to hear what, what, uh, let's go through point by point what Kenny did wrong here. So she goes after him. Kenny's like, listen, I'm not afraid of that thing. I'm afraid of Boyd. He brought worms. He gave uh, this, he gave it to the scariest thing. We don't know opening it up. Chrissy says, break it down. We can harvest this thing, make a weapon. Uh, he's like, how do we know it won't kill you? She says, I want to I want to risk it, but I need you with me. We're together. And she says, like, the Rocky Five thing. Uh, the, the Tom, we're home team. Home team. Home yeah. team. Like, like we're, we're, we're partners here. And here we go, Tony. Kenny's like, I, I don't think we're partners anymore. No, <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I, I'm like totally happy that you have her, but I can't. And this doesn't make sense. She's like, but I just can't sit here and watch you kill yourself while you're loving somebody else or something. And, and I'm angry. And and she's just like, what the fuck? Kenny? Yeah, yeah, you just told her you loved her. Number one. Right. And if you love someone, you love someone unconditionally, no matter what. And then he says, I just want you to be happy. Yeah, I just want you right. to be happy. I, so you're contradicting yourself in what you're saying right here, right? You're not you're not leaving anything that's clear. Number one, if you was trying to be with this chick and she with somebody else and everything else, the first thing you would be like, listen, I got you no matter what, girl. Whether we together or not together like that, I got you. You know, I'll always be here for you. So let's get this done. If anything's going down, I'm here to protect you. That's what a man is supposed to do for a woman, right? To be a protector and stuff. So Kenny just, he, he needs to learn how to, you're going to talk to a chick. You can't get all up in your emotions like that. Yeah, and, no and woman all, likes you if, if you're in your emotions. Not, I mean, not unless it's earned in the sense of the way that it makes sense. In the moment, in that moment, what Kenny needs to do is play it cool. In this whole situation, the, it's her work out her own situation with her own partner. If that doesn't work out, 
make it clear that you're still interested, but let Chrissy yeah. come to you. And and he never should bring this up. And he knows it, but he does in the moment. As as Chloe was saying, we've all been in this moment where we break down this information. And Kenny knows. Immediately he gets post-fight traumatic realization that we've all had too. Uh, I know I've said shit. I don't, like, yes, when, the other night, the, to the people downstairs, his dog was barking at like one in the morning and that woke me up twice and I got up and I slammed the door and got angry. I'm like, that was a bad reaction. You know, it pissed me off, like, but it was a poor reaction on my part and you immediately get that feeling in the moment, like, what did I do? And Kenny did it in, in too crazy of a situation in that moment where right now he should just be, Again, I don't mind him being the conscientious objector here, Tony, to what's going on. Mm -hmm. But he, he, you just, you said it perfect. He's he's letting his emotions dictate the situation in a time where emotions can't play a part. You you can't feel you're there's time and place for everything. Someone said it in the chat. I'm going to echo their statement, Tony. Kenny didn't read the room. Kenny can't doesn't have the emotional. Uh, adultness or something whatever you want to say to be able to read the room which is why i know that he can't handle this chick the way he is if he's going in there he's a he's a three pump chump <laughs> i i, I gary you're, you're taking it a step further than me but i'll take it i'll, I'll be honest, honest. Uh, he's, he, if, if, if that's the way he's acting that's just what's gonna be there's no way around it man there's no <laughs> way around especially i don't know how long it's been since he's been with someone if he's ever been with someone but he's playing it like He's never been with anyone in his life. He has no, uh, he has no, uh, you know, education of being with a woman. But we do have a super chat here from from uh, Mika. She says, uh, she says, please buy Phil a coffee, Tony. I adore you, oh, okay. as you should. And I'll, trust, I'll, I'll trust buy me, next time. I, next time I'm hanging out with Tony, I'm gonna make him buy me a pizza and a beer. I, I, will, I will buy him. He said coffee. Now you talking pizza? No, I'm uh, I'm, at, I'm adding a pizza, Tony. I'm adding a pizza. I'm gonna I'm adding a pizza. Okay, so uh, so. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mari comes out a bit. Oh, here we go, Tony. I want to, this is the scene watching this episode. This was the scene I most wanted to talk to you about just because of what the hell was going on here. So Mari comes out of bed. First off, the way she was walking was the dead giveaway that it was a dream. Did you at any point think this was real or did you kind of feel like this was a dream the whole time? For who? Uh, the Mar the next scene that we're getting into is the Mari coming out of bed and she's walking around the room and the body of Smiley's gone. She comes for Boyd. Boyd sees Smiley standing up, walking towards them. Boyd shoots him, tells her to get out, but she sees the music box in her dream. I said, was she infected? And then I she wakes up in the bed and all the dream. I kind of, yeah, I suspected that was a dream the whole time. Yeah, but, yeah I thought it was a dream the whole time. But w what the hell is going on? She mentions later in the episode that we'll talk about later that she, that Boyd gave her her dreams. Uh, we, we, I hinted earlier and I've been talking. How does he know Boyd is the one who gave her that dream? Right. How is there so much of what Hannah said to us about characters talking off screen that we don't know about? Or is there some hinky shit going on? That That is the thing. When Hannah came on, she said, you don't know what these characters have talked about off screen. And they have talked about things off screen. So when we hear, we talked about the Donna situation a little bit earlier. How would Donna know about the trees and everything else? The fact that Hannah says these people are talking off screen could mean that they've already told about things off screen. You know what I mean? And, and so, and Boyd did tell her about the trees and, you know, you didn't see it say it, but she says, according to Boyd, specifically mentions his name, according to Boyd, there are trees. Yeah, and we did see them have a conversation. So there could have been more to that conversation that got cut for time in the edit that he actually tells her about the trees as well. Or maybe I haven't just seen that again. So, uh, so I don't know. This is an interesting scene with Mari having this. Uh, having these visions, seeing the music box. The music box is horrifying. Uh, I guess a couple questions here. Does the music box have to be necessarily tied to the worms? Are the, is the music box maybe just tied to whatever the next level entity is in this situation? And so this isn't necessarily a blood worm situation. The blood worms help you tap into the music box more. Or is the music box, as we said, the ballerina and the music box seem to be helping Boyd get rid of the worms. Is the music box some sort of positive communication? What the hell's up with the music box, Tony? It's hard to tell. Exactly. When we look at the music box... 
Or we can go by is what Martin said. Martin said, when the music stops, they are coming. They're coming. So is this just a big countdown till episode nine and 10, till this music stops? When the music stops, he says they're coming. Does the music, the music stop so in any of the scenes that the, the people are get the music box? Uh, does the music stop before they get their vision? Tony, I'm so I'm sorry. I just had a weird visual or audio hallucination of the whole season ending with that door song. When the music's over, turn out the <laughs> lights, turn out the lights. <laughs> sorry. You know, so it, it it comes down to that. that cocaine, Mitch, peace out, bro. He's saying good night, good night, bro. Good night, my friend. And, you know, uh, so uh, you know, it's 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 hard to tell. We have we have to look at it that way. You know, whether it's whether it's uh, uh, when what happens when the music actually stops. I don't know if the music stops or they just switch the scene. Yeah, it's good. It's a good. It's a good question. But Mari seems to have. The uh, the dreams as well. So we go off to Donna, who is talks about the soil being poisoned in the greenhouse. Fatima comes in and blurts out that she's pregnant. Donna gives a happy look, like overly happy, and says, Ellis must be so, oh my God, so happy. And there's a lot of over emotions here by Donna in this scene, just to point out. And uh, Fatima says, I'm pregnant, but it, I've been told being pregnant is medically impossible. And she thinks, what if this is just a mind fuck? Donna laughs hysterically and says, I thought this place was shit. We've seen so many bad things. Monsters, endless roads, our crops poison, evil trees that trap you in dungeons. Don't ask. Uh, but uh, why not some good impossible shit too? Maybe there's some good here. You met the love of your life. You have a baby. It's happy. It's happy time. Uh, and she says the line that Tony mentioned in his video. Great line. Another Aunt May line. Miracles is just the other side of a nightmare. She says, what if you're wrong? But what if I'm right? Tony, I'm going to pass over to you, but I have one more thing to add to the flame here. This was a very optimistic speech by Donna, but I, I challenge everybody, go back and listen to the music in this scene that's underscoring the scene. It's dark ass music, like foreboding, bad shit happening music. So I don't know if you picked up on that and got a similar vibe or what. Uh, but uh, Tony, what do you think of this scene? Yeah, one hundred percent. It just makes me think Donna's gonna something's going on with Donna. Whether she's the mole or she's gonna die, one or the other is going to happen. When they give an actress or actor this much juice and they keep showing her in these type of scenes, they're trying to build up the sympathy that you're gonna feel when she's gone. Yeah. And yep. this seems, and again, you have to have somebody that's able to take her spot when she leaves. And if you have Fatima there that can take her spot, you have the new black woman that's there that's inside the place, and possibly she could take her spot because she seems like the same strong type of character that Donna is, the bus driving woman. It just seems that it, it's quite possible that this could be the end for Donna this season. Yeah, I, I I I could not agree with you more. And it's part of the reason why even I think the first time we talked to Liz, we said we fear for your safety because you're the emotional uh, center of the show. Uh, people in the chat, dirty daughter, dirty daughter, she's dirty. OK, so we finally get the scene that people in Facebook groups and message boards and our chat section and voicemail callers that have been wanting to have for a long time. Tabitha and Jade exchanging notes on their visions. We finally get this scene. Uh, no, T Tabitha and Jade, yeah. So uh, Jade, who has too many great one-liners and dialogue to write down, it's just too fast. Jade and Tabitha compare visions. Jade goes over his and says, Christopher is the creepiest thing I've ever dealt with in my life. The picture, uh, and shows the picture of little Victor, and Tabitha immediately knows it's little Victor in there. Uh, she sees children. Each time, terrifying children, he sees different things. She sees the same thing every time. But as Tony mentioned in his video, please watch it. Uh, and he can expand on this a little bit now. That's not exactly true for Tabitha, right, Tony? Tabitha's not right. just seen the same thing every time, right? She no, it's not. Because we know she's seen the visions when she was walking up inside what appears to be the lighthouse. And she had a couple of visions. And then one vision when she gets outside the lighthouse was her looking around and it was all sunny and everything else. So she has she has that vision and what's going on. Then the vision of, of, of her husband 
hanging by his feet and screaming in her, in her face, right? So she does see different visions that like him, though she tried to front and said it was only one, but she has seen. right. She and, and God bless Tabitha. Tabitha likes to give partial information and hold some things to the vest, even in this scene where she mentions everything else and it takes a happenstance for her to me mention the dungeon there or uh, the cavern. So, uh, okay, so Jade talks about Christopher. She sees children every time that are terrifying. Uh, she mentions that uh, she, she thought she's being punished for the loss of her son. And then we get, this is why Jade's my favorite character, Tony. Because, yeah. because Jade is a dick, but he's also, he reminds me of myself here. He's also the nicest guy in the world. Once he hears that Tabitha's like internalizing what happened to her son and thinking anything's a blame, he shifts his energy to this nice Jade energy uh, and yeah. says, you're not being punished. This is just a fucked up place where bad shit happens to fucked up people, you know, fucked up things, scary shit happens. Don't that's, you can, you can take that off your plate. It's just a in have another drink. You know, it's it's he's he's the guy you need in that situation, Tony. You know, you have buddies like that. I have buddies like that. I'm that guy for people. I know you're that guy for people. You've been that guy for me when I went through traumatic shit. Like it's it's like you need that person that says that right thing, keep you sane, and Jade's that guy. And and that's what to your point, what we were talking about earlier. Jade might be seeing the symbols similar to Christopher, but he knows what Christopher went through. And I think at core, Jade is a very good person that's smarter than this place. And he's going to he's gonna outsmart this place. It's about just getting him in the right situation. And I know somewhere within some of your theories, you think he's even responsible for this place in yeah. a weird backwards loop. So by that definition, again, he's the only one that can figure out this place. If we go by Tony's definition, uh, like a Doc Brown situation where young Doc Brown is the only one that can figure out the shit old Doc Brown did. Uh, if we're going with Tony's... Uh, paradox of uh, Jade creating this in a time loop situation. But but even beyond that, if we're just saying, I think he, his, his inter, his, in, his professor MacGyverness ingenuity is the word I couldn't think of that I was looking for. So I called it professorness or MacGyverness Ooh. is going to be one of the keys to getting them out of this place, Tony. Well, no, I mean, obviously he's going to have to go down in the caves now. She brought the caves up. That means you're going to see a Tabitha Jade mission into the caves. And when she takes him to that, those drawings, those drawings that are going to be the key to him figuring out exactly what this means. And there's no doubt about it. He's going to look at the drawings and Jade's going to be able to figure it out. And that's it. That's the only reason they brought that up in the show was for that. Yeah, that and this no doubt about it. He's going back in the cage with Tabitha. He's going to look at that. He's going to figure out what that symbol means. I'll add it. one to you, Tony. Victor is coming too. Could be. I mean, I would rather take Victor because Tabitha talked too much. <laughs> when they're down there, I was like, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Freeman wants is asking Tony, can we get a poll? Should Dale get put in the box? We did that poll already. But let me see if I can pull one up for you again. Okay. So could, should we put a poll up? Should we get a poll if Taylor should be put in the box? <laughs> no. Sorry. I love polls. Okay. So she sees, uh, let's, let's get back into this and talk through the scene. She sees children. Uh, she takes a drink. Jade, who's a good dude, shifts his energy to nice Jade and says, you're not being punished. Fucked up place. Tabitha's about to leave, but she notices the symbol in the book in Chris's incel book of crazy. One of jo Jade's many funny one liners. She says she saw the symbol before and, and uh, he says, what in a dream? And she says, no, on the walls of the tunnel. And Jade is like, wait, the fuck the tunnel, wait, 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 the, the tunnels. And as Tony said, I think similar to the end of last season, we're going to get a cliffhanger. At, okay, should have put this up as a poll, but it's not really a poll question. It's more for you, Tony. How much closure are we going to get this season and how much is going to be teased for next season? Will we get Jade and Tabitha in the tunnels by the end of this season? Uh, yes. Yes. They will definitely be in the tunnel. You think that's season episode nine and ten stuff? Yeah, episode nine and ten, they're gonna be up in there. 
with that. We're almost done with the season. Um, yeah, we only got three. We only get three more episodes um, exactly. to go. But, yeah, he's definitely going to be in there and figure that. Symbol thing will be done by the end of the season. We'll, we'll figure out exactly what the symbol means. What do you? And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this next week. But we have to start thinking about this too, Tony. Keep this in mind. What do you think our big cliffhanger into next season is going to be? This this year it was uh, the bus coming into town. What will be our big thing? Who was or, ever on the rooftop during the flood or inside some type of boat? Okay, so you flood. think the flood starts at the end of this season? I think the flood will, will end everything, yes. It'll kill, every, it'll kill most people. Yeah, ep- next episode is episode eight, but I guess I'm going by what we... I forget who said it, but someone said nine and ten feels like one big, long episode. Yeah, they did. They did. It's like one thing. Okay, so uh, Jade, who's a good dude... Does good things, says the tongue. So we get to Victor and Ethan counting some more. They they talk about the trees changing, and Victor says it's always the same here. So Victor has no memory of the change. Things change here. It's usually bad. Ethan says if it never happened before, maybe it's good. And it's the second time we heard something like this in the episode, Tony. I know you mentioned this in your video too, so maybe it could be good stuff. I'm going to challenge that. <laughs> I even know that we've had this hope. I think this hope is going to be, this isn't good. I, I don't think these trees changing is a good thing. Do you think the trees changing is a good you know, thing? Every time that kid says something, you got to really look at it and think that, that, you know, you know, that, that it was, uh, that it was good. But right now he might have be something wrong with it. But I, I would still have to say that if he's saying it, that it, there has to be something going on. Okay, so so maybe we will see some good by the end of the season. Beer drop. Don't, uh, we don't take it as trolling. I think the what's the best thing about doing what Tony and I do is hearing all perspectives, people that are feeling it or not feeling it. It's how, again, how you express that shit and you expressed it in a good way, feeling it like it might be slow for you. Hopefully it does pick up by the end of the season for you. But either way, I hope you stick around to season three because I feel like season two in some ways, uh, Tony's talked about this before too, but I agree with him. Season two, because it got more eyes setting the table again. And I think a lot of the action in this series, I imagine will be in the season three, season four period. If you look at every TV show through the history of television shows, it's season three where they blow up and take off. That's this season. Tony, Deep Space Nine is one of my favorite series, maybe my favorite of all time. Not one of the best necessarily, but one of my favorite. First two seasons are boring. Doesn't Shit doesn't happen until Cisco grows the beard and season three st- happens. Yeah, because they like, try to hook you with the uh, – take Game of Thrones. They hook you in season one, right? They try to hook you with Ned's dark death in season one. Then they bring in season two, and then they bring the Red Wedding in. To, to blow to blow you up because then you're like oh season two rob's gonna come and avenge his father everyone thinks that and then they blow it all up in season three and that's when it takes off so usually that that's that that's the, the way they roll it but truth but truth be told uh bear bear wop we hope you stick with myself and tony through it all yeah. And check out the stream. Like it or not, we respect and we want your thoughts. Calling in 781 8509. Let us know what you're not feeling about this season. We want to hear it as much as we want to hear. We're not in an echo chamber here, and we want to we want to hear everything. So Victor and Ethan are counting everything. And we go back to the autopsy, and Kenny's back. His tantrum's over. They open up Smiley, and she's like, What the fuck? It's human. As uh Tony was actually mentioning something similar to this last night on his uh on his prediction stream, saying uh that maybe a shell for some other creature. Uh, you mentioned a couple of examples of it. I'll also add the uh the 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 utron crane. Uh so wait, 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 we got let's let's take this um stay goal saying admit it, Tony, not aliens, Don Tony, eat a chip, totally not aliens. Let's let's go through this. Let, let, let me deal when with it. When are you guys gonna learn not to call Tony out? I, I have I told you what it was, right? I told you that I believe we're dealing with aliens yet. We have not let's been go, let's go full screen, Tony. We, we, we have not confirmed yet. They may freeze freeze everything by doing that. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to fuck with the fuck with everything. Am I frozen too, or is it just I think you're frozen too? I think we're both frozen. <laughs> yeah, I won't touch anything again. Can't do anything with this damn melon thing right now. But uh I was trying to feature you. I, 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 I was trying to I, feature you, Tony. Oh my I god. I said it from the beginning that we're dealing with aliens. That's what I think we're dealing with, and that's what it will be when it's all said and done. So 
these creatures, I, I, I believe that, that they were humans who were transformed by alien parasites. You know what I mean? So we'll see what it is in the end. If we are not dealing with aliens, then I 100% will do exactly what I said I'll do. I'll take He'll that. eat the damn chip. It's no going to happen. Doubt. And he I'm, also simultaneously. Come in here right now, and the next thing we know that it's magic and Fatima is a, doing all this magic shit, I'll be right here. And she's being worshipped and all this. I'll be right here to eat the chip. First episode. And he's also Guaranteed. double double challenged ricky kenny yes to the uh to a bull riding competition I at did. the first ever from con that we'll talk a little bit more at the end of the show yes okay so know that about it so yeah so, I, I, i'm not trying to front on that 100 so they open up smiley and she's like what the fuck it's a human or it used to be human all the anatomy is there but it's shriveled up it's mummified, like mummification which means it's like removed all the liquid like you see in a museum uh, Boyd is like, break this down for me, like I'm in, like I'm a, like a third grader, like like all of us, the audience. Could you could you could you break down this information, like 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 uh, so I can understand that she's like, there's no blood, there's no fluid, there's nothing. You said blood for blood, but there's no fucking blood worms. There has to be liquid. What the fuck is going on here? And she's pissed. She's pissed. She and again, I'm gonna make a reference to back in the day when my VCR didn't work. I got pissed. And you know what I did? I beat the shit out of the thing, and then eventually it worked. Boyd and Kenny look helpless as fuck, and they're like, oh, maybe there's, like, different kind of blood and stuff. And she just pans around the body. She's like, there's got to be something. There's got to be something in there. And then she pulls out a knife and goes all Mike Myers on this shit. I, and I wanted to talk to Chloe about this, and I kind of did, but she just had so much fun. You can just see her, ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> stabbing the shit out of that thing, Tony. That was so much fun. I wish I was doing it. I want to beat the shit out of something when it's not working. And Kenny and Boyd eventually stop her, but she did poke a gallbladder and it leaks yellow like a yolk. And uh, Boyd is like, well, it's liquid. We can use that maybe. And she's like, maybe it's something. Yeah, it's something. Christy realizes she did it. And Kenny and Boyd kind of support her. And they're like, wow, you did really fucking awesome. Mission successful. Or we'll see. So, uh, t Tony, I guess there's not much to talk about this because it's a wait and see kind of situation to see if uh, they can use this liquid. But it was a it was a good scene. I mean, there was a lot of foreplay to get us to this scene in this it episode. Was so it's hard to get. It took uh, it took so long to get to this stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of foreplay. It was a lot of foreplay. Like every time they're about to do it, they pause. Every time about to do it again, they pause. And then I have to do because they dragged this autopsy the whole episode. And finally, what do they call that? Kurt, not curbing. So, 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 uh, they, 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 they dragged that shit out for the whole episode to get you to this point. And they kept going, you know. But we got again. I asked her. She came on just now. We and we talked to her. I, I, I thought they would do a brain scan. Or yeah, take uh, brain Jen, our, my good friend. A uh, friend of my channel, channel member over on my side as well, Jen Hack says, why didn't they open up the head and channel member over here as well? Thank you for the supporting both of us, Jen. Why, did, why didn't why did they open up the head? Maybe the worms were in there. Yeah, and she specifically said that that's a different type of autopsy. It's not the standard autopsy that they were doing and that who knows they could go for the brain. So we're not we're not sure if that's and she also just said that you know the blood worms we may not have seen the last of the yeah. blood worms. No, she that that was the big reveal from her tonight. She yeah. very specifically said, Ab, you haven't maybe you haven't seen the last of those blood worms." Yeah, no doubt about it. So the blood worms are definitely coming back. Without, without a shadow of a doubt. And so uh, mission successful, a lot of foreplay to get to that scene, but we did get some liquid. Great scene, well acted by all three of them. So we go off to Elgin and Julie, and Elgin, uh, who is a little bit of, uh, to use, to, I used to say Chatty Cathy, but I'm going to I'm gonna adopt Tony's Chatty Patty. And uh, Elgin, who's a little bit of a Chatty Patty, tells Julie about uh, Dead Smiley. He's like, Tony, it's never a good idea. Whenever I, these, these are the people, whenever anyone tells me something like this, someone says, I can tell you a secret, but don't tell anybody. I know never to tell that person a secret, but that's beside the point. Elgin's like, Julie, I got a secret to tell you. Don't tell anybody. But, uh, but Boyd killed one of the, killed one of the uh, creatures. 
I, I would, I mean, let me, uh, I'll give every, every guy or maybe girl who works for you too. I give you some Teflon to Don technique. All right. If you ever want to right, play some music for this, right, if, yeah. if you ever want to talk to a woman or a woman or a man or whatever you're into and they haven't texted you back and you want them to text you back, I do it all the time. It works every time. All you got to do is text them these words that I'm telling you right now. Just say this in the text. Hey, can you keep a secret? That's it. Just, just do that. Just text any one of them. If you're trying to talk to a chick and she's ghosted you and she ain't talked to you for a while, you try to talk to a man, just say, hey, can you keep a secret? And watch and don't don't say anything back. And let I guarantee they'll send you 15 texts in a row saying, I sure can. I sure can. Yeah, I can. What's the secret? They will be up because everybody wants the tea. Everyone wants a secret. It's everybody, true. Everybody wants the tea. And I'm telling you, that's all you got to do. And when he said that to her, she's going to spill the beans to her dad. As, as the wonderful, amazing, our friend and partner in crime, the Anna from Red Lipstick Club says in the live chat, L laughing my ass off. We love secrets. Well, Ever, everyone all you have to say, I'm trying trust the Don. I've used it a thousand times. Just go to a chick who who has ever who has ever ghosted you and stopped talking to you, and you want to get back in there. Just say that. Now your follow up line and everything else, you got to work on that yourself. But I'm telling you, just say, hey, can you keep your now, secret? <laughs> say that right usually now. you have to tune in to the late night podcast for this kind of stuff but you're getting it tonight folks that's so, right so julie and elgin talk about dead smiley don't tell anybody but this is a good thing julie says elgin says some very important shit here tony elgin says the dream i had on the bus i can't shake the feeling i'm missing something this is what made me think the quaid total recall shit mm -hmm. i can't remember but when i saw the dead monster it triggered something but I'm not sure if I should remember it, Victor, or if it's fake. He says there, there's no place. It's basically it, yet. Yeah. Oh, and then Julie says uh, this place is like every time, every time you think uh, you're through the trouble, your trouble doubles. Don't worry, get fucked in Fromville. It's it's so she basically kind of comforts him and stuff here, and they get a back and forth with each other. They. These two actors have excellent chemistry. I know he's involved with Sarah, it seems like, on the show and to a certain extent, and she's too young. But I, I think the actors have a lot of fun working with each other, and that's why a lot of people see that chemistry between them. Mm -hmm. Because I just think, uh, as as Hannah said when she was on Teflon TV, she, she and the actor played it like they have crushes on each other, even if yeah. it's not in the script. That's how that's how the two of them chose to play the scene. Uh, so and you can kind of see it in the way they're playing it with each other. They they have a very I don't know. I'd watch these two. I'd watch these two actors in a romantic comedy and they do it really well. They have good. They have good chemistry, Tony. It they might do. not work for the character because one's 16 and one's 21 or whatever. But like the actors are probably both both in there like. Han is what 21 and he's like 25 or something like them in a movie together as a romantic duo. It reminds me of the young, you know, that guy who's in the, that comedian who's in the Pizza Hut commercials. You know what I'm talking about? Black dudes mm -hmm. in the Pizza mm -hmm. Hut commercials. Mm -hmm. He reminds me of a young version. <laughs> that's what he reminds me. I can, I can I see that. I can't think of his name right now. But that's who he reminds me of. Yeah. Anyone know the black dude who's in the Pizza Hut commercial? No one out pizzas the hut. Like, <laughs> That's who he reminds me of, like a young bird. Remember that. Remember that for next week. Remember that for next week. And but, listen, Elgin will be here next week, right? We'll have him here next week. He'll be on the show with us. So all the stuff you want to say, get ready and be. And ready he probably him. won't be at a musical festival. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Even though we didn't mind her being out. Oh, of dude, I had to talk to her all night. I talked all to night her long. If I just did, we just didn't want to. Keep you didn't want to take away from her a good time because she yeah, had to work time with the She was uh, so. Let me put that. There. She was willing to stay longer. She was. She would have stayed longer and everything else and chilled with us and stuff. But I and me and Phil, we we made the decision that we don't want to keep her from. She's out. She's having fun with her friends. Let her have a fun with her friends. We yeah, we we, we, we we didn't want to. We didn't want to have her have. To, we even said right from the beginning, "Are you sure you want to do this? Like, go party." You know, and she's like, "Yeah, oh, I want to hang out with you guys for a while." So, uh, and anyways, so Elgin tells Julie, "Don't tell anybody," but we killed Smiley. 
Uh, he had a dream in the bus, troubles, doubles. Okay, they go back and forth. They just have good sass, good back and forth. She tells him how she deals with her troubles. And I, Tony mentioned this in his video. I've done the same thing. This is definitely something I've done before. Uh, I grew up uh, in a house that I was lucky enough to have one of those shitty Walmart above ground pools in my backyard. Uh, so I would do it in the pool in the summer where I just like lay in the back of the pool, like, and just look up at the sky. You go at night uh, on, a, on a warm summer night. And I mean, that, that thing lasts, you know, we, we did the thing where every few years we buy a new one, like a new hundred dollar Walmart pool. Cause we just like mm -hmm. leave it up in the winter. <laughs> we didn't take that shit down. We'd set up once and just, you know, let it till it died and then, then put up another one. Uh, but th there was nothing like that feeling. So to, you mentioned that too. You, you've done that in, in bathtubs. And so many times in my bathtub, I've laid with the water right into my earlobes and just heard that. It's like when you get underneath, it's not the same hearing. But when you're right there on, the, you know, it's it's, yeah. a, it's a different feeling. So when she said it, I 100% I understand. Exactly yeah, it was, it was so good. I'm, I'm really loving Julie this season. I know they're Julie haters, but I think. I love Julie, Julie too. Yeah, I love Julie. She, she seems like a really real character and I'm enjoying Hannah a lot this season. It's not just because she was here. I'll shit on actors, even if they're here too. Like it's, it's, if I, if I don't like what they're doing. Uh, we, have they, to. we have to. Yeah, we have we have to be honest. We have we have to, we have, we have to give the honest situation. We'll be no, we'll be nice to the person, but we'll sass them on their character if we don't like it. But uh, but uh, but I really am enjoying Julie this season. So we go. So uh, they have a back and forth. That's nice. So we go off to Ellis and Fatima, and he's like, he has a little foreshadowy line about being a dad, where he says. I'm never going to be comfortable again. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're not Ellis. And uh, again, I like Ellis. Uh, and he finally presses her. Are you okay? But the scene cuts and we don't see something. This is the first time that the show's editing has pissed me off for a second. I wanted to see this conversation, Tony. 100%. I, I wish they would just show it. The whole conversation, but for whatever reason they did. Yeah, and for they, whatever they, reason they chose not to. And it's an interesting choice, though, isn't it? Isn't it interesting that they chose not to show this conversation? It is. I, I would have showed it, but I don't understand why they didn't. But for whatever reason, they, they felt like it was, it was nothing to show. I But uh, I, I, it could be like, we, you know what it's going to be. But you would think you want to see the dude's reaction. Right from it. Mr. Freeman says, "Why aren't mods putting people on timeout for spoiling stuff you leaked?" I think because part of the people don't know things are being leaked. But what is, what is leaked? That that's uh, really let's leaked. read what Mr. Freeman's comment is in the live chat and see if we can do anything about it right Let's now uh, and uh, i'll get i'll uh continue with the recap while, is while Mr. freeman I... who's le leaking shit no 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 she she said uh why are mods not putting up some said someone please let us know if anyone is because i don't know what's to come so i don't know what leaks are and we're not monitoring the chart chat too closely but if you know anyone that's putting that in the information let us know and we'll put them in the box yeah, if if it will definitely put them in a box, uh, but it, it's 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 like if, if it's a if, are they saying that they, they seen this or this is a theory of theirs? It's two different things. They Someone says it's that. Ben Fra Ben Franklin. He may have uh, made a lot of in inventions, but he's also inventing some spoilers. Sorry, that was bad. Is it Ben Franklin? I don't, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Ben Ben. Speak your mind, Ben. Are you spoiling shit? People in the live chat, give us a consensus. Thumbs yeah, up it. if we need to ban Ben. Thumbs yeah. up to ban Ben. Is Ben? Is Ben? Come on, Benny. We we haven't been watching Ben. Don't do it to us, Benny and the Jets. Don't do it, Ben. And you make me have to go back and do this shit, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Really? You making to? We we're trying to we're trying to be silly. Trying to run the show here, Benny. Benny, Ben, Ban, Ben. Oh, we got banning Ben. No. <laughs> I don't think they really mean to ban Ben. Do they okay, really we're, not, mean we're not going to ban Ben. S give us, give us a, tell us Ben that you're going to quiet about any potential spoilers, Ben. Okay. Anyways, we don't want to ban you, Ben. We, we we want everyone. Anyways, let's continue here. So, uh, put him in the box. Ben in the box. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just bloodthirsty. You want you want everyone in the box. I'm going to make a whole video clip of putting people in the box. Next week, 
I will have the whole video clip for putting people in the box. Put them in the box. Well, okay. well, well, let's hope that that Ben is just is respectful. So we're almost done with our recap here. So Boyd and Kenny. Uh, Kenny says, big day. He asks, how can we test the stuff that will work? Boyd says, no clue. He says, let's worry about that tomorrow. And Kenny's like, sure. He tell, tell Christy, I said, bye. And Boyd says, you want your badge back? It's yours. And Kenny says, see you later. How long does Benny take? Does Benny, does Kenny take the badge back by the end of the season? Yeah, he has to take the badge back by the end of the season. No doubt about it. I mean, Kenny's just playing coy. You know what I mean right now? You know he want that bad. I just don't understand how Kenny's allowed to keep the gun if he doesn't, if he, if he has no badge. It should be a stipulation. He's great. You know I mean? Boys put that question. up there. Why do you allow the Kenny to keep the gun if he doesn't have the badge? That was the whole reason why other residents weren't allowed to keep the rifles. So Jesse, it has to be the same situation. You got to keep it 100%. Man. Jesse, I can say with 100% certainty because to make it is very low key, there will be a box at the con. So 100 million billion percent. If we can have one piece of sort of we, we the first one we might not be able to afford to have at the the big thing tony i know he's talked to me off screen that we don't want to spoil it but yeah. he has he has a specific idea for something that we need a big budget for that we probably won't be able to do in the first one but at minimum we will have uh we will have the box we will have the box a replica of the box that you'll be able to go in and take pictures of yourself in the yeah. box no because box. that's easy we can we can go down to home depot and buy a box for 49.95 <laughs> We will have the box. The box will be there. I guarantee you. Know, some of the other stuff we want to do, it's like we need double dare like shit going on. But like the uh, but like the box, we have, or we, can, we can order one from Amazon for uh, twenty nine ninety nine if we want to do that shit. Okay, sorry. Let's continue. So Kenny says, big day, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Boyd holds the bile as we go over to Chrissy comforting Mari. Uh, Mari says, your friend Boyd gave me your nightmares. She explains the dreams and she says, good, okay. Okay, so Tony... What's the significance? We've hinted at it a little bit tonight of Mari saying that Boyd gave her her dreams. You said earlier, how does she know this? Did she over? Did she overhear Boyd telling Christy about the the dreams about the bo the ballerina in the box? Like we we haven't we haven't has Boyd told anyone about the ballerina in the I box? Have to go back and look and see if Boyd actually said. I know he was spilling a lot of stuff when he was talking about the worms, and I don't know if she was in the room at that particular time. But I have to go back and see if she was in the room when she was saying all that stuff. Because if she was, then that explains everything. Yeah. But if she wasn't, then how the hell would she know that Boyd is? Good? And then and then Chrissy says, "I'm gonna talk to him about that." Yep. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's very, it's just very interesting to me that, I mean, it's, I guess we can say that he did say something like that. I might be missing it or misremembering it. So I'll leave that out. People in the comment section of this video after it's posted, if you know that information, people that are rewatching, let us know if you remember that. So we go into our last Part and everyone, if you want to call on in, now's the time. We got a couple of voicemails in the can, but if uh, if you want to call on in, Tony and I both got to get up, but we're we're on for a little bit here, and we'll take some bit, voicemails and stuff. Tony, Tony's getting ready for bed, uh, but uh, our our, our, our <laughs> it's been a long it's been a long day. For me. Our fi our final seed, and he streamed for four hours yesterday. Uh, Elgin uh, taking a bath, Tony in his clothes. And we, we let, me, let me get before before we we'll hold it. I'll pass over to you in a second. Sack. He's in a potato sack. So he's in like, his, like you said, like he's having a race and shit. Like, why would you do that, dude? We'll get to the text as well, uh, Wanda. Uh, so Elgin takes a bath in his clothes, I guess, dreaming. And he hears the song, sees the box, and he gets a horrible vision of a woman, maybe Fatima, uh, super scaring me before bed to watch this wailing the sound is very key there was like a weird audio wail or laugh was it a laugh or was it a wail i don't know subtitle people let me know what it said it was just it was a woman it definitely was woman voice and it was horrifying and that's the end of our episode tony what do you think was going on or what's your first thoughts it's on what fatima it's a fatima so i i think that again i've told you before this is a time loop and they've been all here before. 
as I said before, that Victor said that, you know, when the cars were put there, that he didn't put the cars in front of him, but he put these other cars in, in there. I think he did do it. it. Just wasn't that version of Victor. And I think that's exactly what's going on here. It's Fatima. The shirt is not exactly the same one that Fatima's wearing, but it is a shirt that Fatima would wear. Again, you have to understand that the clothes that she's wearing isn't all the clothes that she brought. We have been told in Colony House that they share all their clothes and everything else. So she's wearing some bootleg clothes, some used Salvation Army shit, right, and everything else. So this is a, a, a thing that, that she's probably wore, a different version of Fatima that has been killed. And that's why it's coming back now. I think it's coming back to him as a warning, saying that this is what's going on. You know what I mean? How to stop it, prevent the loop from happening again. But I believe that a version of Fatima has already been drowned, and she's coming back as a zombie. I think all these people have been killed before. Every yeah. one of them. And, it's just, and, and you, it's you, think, it you think for sure this was a dream? It's 100% a dream. Every time we've seen a, 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 a music box, except for Boyd when he was inside the place, it's been a dream. There's been not one time that it's actual physically that's happened to somebody with the music box right then. Every other time since Boyd has left that place and we've seen the box, 100% it's been a dream, so there's no doubt it's a dream. Now let's get into some voicemails while we still get some time. Uh, this is area code five zero four hey guys this is miss t calling from new orleans miss t at the end when elgin was being held down by the ghost lady it looked to me like it she had on the same sweater that fatima did do you think this could be a premonition could fatima be about to die or am i seeing things Thanks again. And Mrs. T has a second half of that message as well. Hey, this is Miss T again. Scratch my first question because <laughs> clearly that was just answered. <laughs> my next question then would be, do you think this means that a water <laughs> death is coming? I love you, Mrs. T. For them all at the end of it? Or was it warning about water maybe being a way to kill the monster. Now I'm going to answer this quick because because I'm, and I'll pass it over to Tony because he has a a specific theory based right around this. I, I definitely think there's some nature coming through, whether it's what Tony's about to talk about or not. There's I don't see any holes in Tony's thought pattern here, so it very easily could be that. For me, I'm tending right now just, I guess, for a deviation to say maybe it's seasonal that we're about to get snow and we're going to get a change in the season and that kind of thing is happening. But I think either way, both of us think natural disaster in some way, Tony, right? Because well, you're yeah, I, I mean, when you look at the one episode, it was episode nine, it's called Magic Balls of Fire. Right, it says or something like that, like something balls like of that. fire. Something, something balls of fire. We also see in Victor's like pictures. Balls that, of fire. We we see in Victor's okay. pictures that we've seen people have you know houses on fire. We also see in Victor's pictures that there's been a great flood. So I think we get both of these things that happen. We're going to get some type of balls of fire, and we're going to get a flood that's going to get everything else. Tony, you know I, mean? I, I have to. Uh, Ask a question from again the wonderful Jen Hack, one of our other friends from Australia. Uh, no, Jen Hack, has anyone tried fire on these monsters? Not to, that I'm aware of, but Tony's been screaming about that since. Yeah, I've been saying from the beginning to put you know fire up the assholes. Yeah, uh, you know, it's straight up and burn. Straight burn. up, straight <laughs> right up that asshole. Okay. I'm not gonna lie about it. Right <laughs> well, the asshole up the hole of the ass. <laughs> well, the doo doo comes out. Put the fire up there. You know what I mean. Let's see what happens. You know what I mean. Let's see what happens when you put. You know, uh, Tony, I don't Tony, want you to burn their feet. Tony, you're you're in the, you're in the zone tonight. Let's uh, go through it and see what happens here. Tabasco up the assholes, and yeah, that's what <laughs> that's what Bob Odenkirk says on Curb. Okay, let's get to more voicemails. Area code three one zero. This is Ralph B. I'm. A, I have a question about the alien theory. Uh, 
do you see anybody really know when the first time it was a UFO sighting? It almost lines up with the uh, the clothes that they're wearing, the where uh, they wear and how they look. It's almost right around the time that they started having UFO sightings. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Thank you, guys. Love it. Love the show. Love watching. Keep it up. Number one, I, you know the, the UFO theory. I was, I, I think, Phil. I could say, accurately, I could say accurately that's my theory that I yep. came up with this yep. shit. Absolutely, and, and I will say that you're 100 right on. Don't let these little things. They're gonna try to throw you off, and I'm, they're gonna try to throw you off here and make you think it's not. They have laid too many seeds to let you know that it's extraterrestrials, and that's what you're. With. Not only is it your theory, you're risking the hottest chip in the world. You're risking basically going on hot ones. I think that's. Excuse me. That's the only thing. The next step on a bet like this is that chip with the hot sauce called the bomb from insanity on the chip and taking a bite of that. If anyone's ever watched the YouTube series Hot Ones, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, that would be the next level. If people wanted to upgrade this bet. Notice how I'm staying out of this bet. <laughs> notice, notice I'm staying clear out of this. Uh, this is why we got to do this shit live one day. In the same but it, it will happen. Listen, I, I guarantee it, this is dealing with aliens. There's no doubt about it. Don't worry about it. Don't be fooled or anything else like that. It's no doubt that's what it's going to be. Look, look, okay. they, 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 they will lead you down the path and make you think it's something else because they will. Listen, if you want to believe that Fatima and they're worshiping her and she's like the, the queen and everything else, I understand why you would think it. I, and again, it's, as I said, I don't, I'm not stuck in my rabbit hole that I won't peek my head out and look in somebody else's and see things that tie towards that. In any video I make, that anything that leads towards a certain direction, I tell you where it's leading, but I still tell you how I feel about it. People say I still need to pay up for the bartender. I, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's true. There there needs to be some sort of penance that needs to be paid. But uh, but uh, we'll we'll, uh, well let's go to the voice at nine one six. Nine one six, go. Hello, this is the voice at nine one six. Yes, I'm still hanging with you. Um, but to piggyback on that last question in regards to what Elgin was see seeing. I got the feeling that he was actually seeing somebody from above. He was like looking down in the water. The perspective was really challenging. Uh, I know they were trying to make it look like something was holding him down and he was looking up. But to me, my mind interpreted as he was actually looking down and in that water or in whatever water, uh, there will be somebody that looks like Fatima drowning and shriveled up. Uh, what do you think? Thanks. Bye-bye. What do you I think, you, It looked like he was looking up to me at like what they were going for. Whether they were successful at it or not is different. And I think that's what we, people are looking at the color colors of Fatima's uh, outfit and that one. It's going to be muted because it's through the water. Like they had the camera in the water shooting through the water. You know what I mean? So I, I thought that she, he was looking up and that's what they were showing. What do you think? I, I absolutely think similar situation. Anyone says that, I'm oh, sorry, my my volume's too up. Uh, anyone that says I'm cheating with the wheel, no, it actually did land on Phil Drink. Uh, so I did have to drink. Let's get to a few vo more voicemails here uh, before we before uh, Tony, Tony decides to wrap up here tonight. Uh, and some of these might be for Chloe, but uh, that's okay. I just want to make sure we play your voicemail tonight. Hey, Tony. Hey, Phil. It's Mika Lee from Key Largo. And Mika, thank you. I mentioned this earlier before I play the rest of your message, Tony. Uh, we're very lucky to have both of us on both of our channels, both of our podcasts. I, I do my own thing. Tony does his own thing. We rock together, come together like Voltron to, to, four, to four of our team here. Uh, but yeah, I was going to say, and I form the head, but that sounds crazy. Oh, you can form that. You can form that. I'll, I'll, be the, I'll be the sword. You can be the head. I'll be the sword. You can be the head. But, but either, either way, uh, either way, you, you can be, you can be, uh, you can you can rock that head. You, 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 I, I, gotta, I gotta be the black, the black, the black one. You're rocking that dude. But but we're lucky to have a lot of you guys that support us. And I don't mean to 
put anyone, but M Mika is out there oh. every day promoting Teflon TV, promoting what we do. She's putting it out there. So I've uh, got to send special and, love and right she now. Is, and she is a boss level member on Teflon TV, which means when you are a boss level member that you can come on to any stream that I do for five minutes. Absolutely. And or no, if you no. ever sign up for, for a membership and you become a boss level member, that means anytime I do a live stream, it could be with a special guest, it doesn't matter who it is. You can come on for five minutes and rock with us no matter what. So if you're boss level, that's what it means and everything else. So you can always come on. I'll send you the link and you got five minutes to, to get your stuff on. That's just what it is to be the boss. So lot, lots of love to Mika for all the support she gives to both of us. Hmm, my internet went down tonight and I wasn't able to see Chloe. But for the last two minutes, I was very upset. Um, I'm like crying like a baby. Oh, uh, we'll and, have her back. Um, um, and I'm going to watch the show now, but um, I'm terribly, terribly crushed. Oh, uh, don't, 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 don't worry, Mika. Don't worry, Mika. We love you, Mika. And we'll make sure we make up for it by being as silly as we can for the next few minutes. And also uh next week make sure you tune in for elgin because tony i've heard this in the live chat people say we've had too many of uh the actresses on the show we need more of the actors the dudes oh, on the show right. so we'll, we'll go bringing out women some eye care i thought me and phil were enough but I'm no no you 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 know you no no i thought me and phil were enough but don't, don't put me enough. into this don't put me into we'll, this. and we got elgin next week we're work on we're working on kenny I, you know, you know, we're trying to get him on. Oh, I with Ricky, him. Ricky will be here eventually. We're gonna get Slick Rick, we're gonna get Slick Rick on. I, I promise you, we'll get Slick Rick. Get Randall. We'll work on Randall as well. Uh, but either way, we'll work as hard as we can. And uh, either I way, I got. I just, I just last week got an offer to interview Randall. And, so and I'm for working the, on that right for these now. last three episodes, we'll be doing, Tony will be doing the best he can to get, to get folks, but either way, Tony and I will be here after every episode. And I can promise you at least this after doing this, this year, season three is going to be easier for us to get people because it can spread the word from the other people that have done it. So, uh, you think we've next, next year, next season, we can probably book ahead of time the whole season yeah. before it even happens. And and, and, and um, we're going to have a, a, a huge round table when the season ends with just about everyone who's been on the show. So we'll have on Donna with Victor, with everybody else on the yeah. right. And, and that's what I'm saying. Luna's saying, please more male actors. We're, we're doing our best. We will get them. Uh, but, but anyways, okay. This is area code nine one nine. Hey everyone, good evening, good evening. Man, I really enjoy the, this has been done before, they're gonna press a reset button. These people have been here, they're trying to warn themselves in different cycles. Um, I even feel like Victor, when he talked about all oh, his friends don't survive, they pass away. So is it possible that the boy is white is Ethan's um, reincarnation, even Back. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to continue this message in a second, Tony. I just want to point out one thing that we talked about last week. We This is episode seven, and we still haven't seen the boy in white. To Tabitha feeling like she's being punished for the child that she lost, or those white children, those, those children in white in the forest, could they be children that she has lost as a mother? Throughout these different resets, going back to Kenny's mom saying mothers need to stick together because she already knows what it's like if she's the mole as well. I, I really, I'm really enjoying the reincarnation thing, especially with you got Jade seeing Union soldiers and it's taking it back in the past. Even um, uh, Chloe, even Christy talking about the mummification. So a lot of ancient alien theories, like they were already here for a long time. You know, H.P. Lovecraft, they've been here for millions of years before we even got started. And a lot of humans and the first humans, so to speak, were like mutants of their failures in a way. And that's how humanity kind of sprang up in that, in that kind of mythos mm. and timeline. Good, good and I'm kind of seeing that even with the creature being human based, but 
something has happened along the way or something that's been changed. So just a, not really a question, just kind of connecting the dots. I got my crazy board with all the little pings and theories and stuff and just wanted to add to. God bless. Have a good evening. Look, that, when you look at the, you know, I know like people like, oh, look at the organs and it apparently appears to be human, you know, and it does 100%. doesn't mean that they are human. Uh, it could be, uh, again, I would think it's a human that's been mutated, it's experimented on, that turned them into exactly what they are. But there are, you know, when you look at alien life forms, after they bring the grays and everything else, they're humanoid forms. Like I said, I didn't expect it to be five hearts in there or anything else like that. that you know, you wouldn't know until they actually got into the brain. The brain is the key. To everything, right? That, that's what you would know. But yeah, the, the ancient aliens and everything else, I'm trying to tell you without a shadow of a doubt that when it's all said and done, this will have nothing. It will have to do with aliens. And that's it's not going to be in the magic. It's not going to be the rituals. You'll see what it's going to be and everything else. And that, that, that that's what it's going to be. So you, you'll see. I, 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 already, I already, I'm very confident in it. I ain't eating that damn chip. If I was wrong, I would, but I know I'm not. Tony, I might have gotten this too late, but Mika did ask if she could come on for five minutes with us. Yeah, yeah she she has the link and everything else. Okay, so and so if, so if, she, if, if I, we are I, still that, on, that is, that, that is when you're when you're a boss level member and you join as a boss level, that means that any stream I could do, it's in the perks. Okay, so you Mika, if you're me. watching, you're welcome. I, I I assume I know t Tony has to get up wicked early in the morning, so it's twelve thirty-seven right now. I assume we'll probably be wrapping up around one, uh, maybe even a little earlier than that. But uh, but if if you yeah, make it, right now. you know she she's got the link. She knows. Okay, it, so so me, Mika definitely jump in. Area code six zero nine says. It's all in the episode's title. F Fatima's baby is inside the belly of the beast because Fatima is the beast. I think Fatima it's is a creature me. alien. And this is from area code 609. Uh, creature alien and was told by her masters that her species isn't an anatomically able to reproduce with humans as they are a different species. Hence, Fatima's shock. I think she had a reverse Stockholm syndrome where she's a mole who's beginning to feel sympathy and love for the human subjects, similar to Omni-Man. I added the Omni-Man part. Peace and love from Ben Blitz. Tony, what do you think about Ben Blitz's perspective? You know, I think Ben Blitz is kind of one to something, but not, I, don't, I don't believe that the belly of the beast could mean that Fatima is a beast, but I don't think people are worshiping her. I don't think she's some god, some deity, or anything like that, or anything, you know, when we seen Fatima the first time, it was a year anniversary that she was there. They were about to have everything else going on and everything else. Tony, you know? I do want to uh, answer two quick questions. One from Luna. Teflon TV, will the next guest stream be members only? I don't think Tony's going to do any members only streams. Probably just subscriber only yeah. streams. Yeah, it'll be a subscriber means, only. Which means just you need to be a subscriber to join in in the live chat. Uh, but I don't. I think members only streams will be more after dark streams yeah, so uh, any stream that i do that says after dark is a member only stream. similar to on my channel when i do those streams when i pick up my phone and i'm drunk in locations like i'll do one on fourth of july when i'm at my cookout with my phone that will be uh my members only stream uh and i would uh, say that chloe would seems like she would definitely do it after dark yeah yeah we, we should try to get chloe on an after dark that would be perfect i'd, I'd love to i'd love to see uh that'd be great Tony, Phil, could you please talk about next week? Uh, we'll, we'll meet. I definitely tune in on Wednesday night to LMR and Tony. They will, and I'll try to join them if I can. Uh, but if not, they do a great job on Wednesday nights talking about. Yeah, and I haven't seen the preview. So if you want to send me yeah, a link, and, the, and they'll the and they will talk about that on. Uh, I haven't seen the preview. So if you want to send me a link to the preview, we'll definitely do it on Sunday. I mean, uh, uh, that would be tomorrow night. Let, let me let me give a shot because I said I would definitely do it. And I, I got. And I'm a man of my word and everything else. I went into the chat yesterday of, uh, what is it, Jeremy of Ice and Fire? That's his name, right? Yep. And I went in there, and he does a stream and everything else. He was having a good time and shot me out a couple of times in the stream and everything else. And, you know, known from the Song of Ice and Fire community. And I know that tomorrow he does a uh, stream. So if you all looking for something to do and you want to talk about it, definitely go check him out tomorrow on Jeremy of Ice and Fire channel and go check him out. And me and Elmar and Philip, we can be, we will be here 
on Wednesday to break down and give you all of our theories. And I have all the pictures and everything else going on there and all that good Definitely stuff. Definitely check so, that out. I, I might do a random uh, something this week on From as well. Uh, maybe uh, tomorrow morning, but I'm not sure. When the writer's strike going, uh, and Miss Freeman asked, with the writer's strike going on, the actors and directors considering going on strike later this month, when will we, season three be from From? I think the best way of thinking about that right now is just not worrying about it because we're in the middle of season two. I think Tony and I will do streams in the off season where we'll definitely talk about that. And if the strike's still going on when the season's over, we'll think about how that will affect season two. But I can I, I can say, having lived through the last uh, writer's strike and situation, things are going to be affected, but uh, things will be pushed back, but we will see. Uh, let's get into a couple more of our text messages. This is area code two, four, Oh, a lot of Kenny hate today. I think Kenny was making the most sense. Why bring the monster inside, cut that shit up outside. And why are we keeping dead monster secret? The damn monster twitches and they look at Kenny like he's crazy for being worried. Are we giving Kenny too much shit? And I think, I guess I'm saying Kenny might be right, but he was just doing it the wrong way. But are we giving Kenny too much shit, Tony? No, not at all. No, no. Kenny was acting like a bitch ass. And, you know, and, and, and that's the bomb. First, we got gangster Kenny. Want to blow somebody's head off. Want to take the gun, put it to Boyd. Oh, you're going to sit down or I'm going to shoot you to save L. So, so you're going to kill me to save my son. I mean, you know, Kenny's just emotional and he's too emotional. His mom said it to him. You good over this chick. What's going on? And he just acted like, yeah, I'm good. Don't worry about it. No, I'm good. You know what I mean? Can he act out of character? You know what I mean? And that, that's the problem. He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't being himself. I mean, he needs to just be himself and all that. So, no, no. Kenny was, was being wrong on that. And uh, Sonic says, Tony and Phil will write season three if the strike's not out. And then Chris says, if Tony and Phil wrote season three, would Kenny get any ass? Would we, If we wrote the script for season three, would we give Kenny ass? Nope. He don't deserve it. And he couldn't handle it. And I wouldn't want to embarrass Kenny like that. You know what I mean? I would like Kenny. Kenny needs to work his way up the ladder. You know what I'm saying? Like go to Colony House and deal with a couple of them average girls up in there. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that, but I'm saying <laughs> you can't just jump to supermodel material. I'm trying to be nice. You know, you got you got you got to work. You got to work your way up. You got to get some stamina. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just can't jump in there, even on the Don. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, you can't, maybe I could. But me, you know, the average person just can't jump in there with Janet Jackson and Beyonce. You got to work your way up to that. You know what I mean? You got to work your way up. You got to get so some start, start with the Start with the publicist. Uh, but but to, Tony, <laughs> Tony, is the, Tony is the writer of the two of us. I'm more the, I, excuse me, the idea guy. So. so <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work your way up man. you gotta work your way up okay so uh eric code 814 these people totally underutilize victor and their secretive nature don't help anything either jim or donna are the mole donna behavior towards fatima's pregnancy made made her look real suspect i don't think it's jim i don't think it's any of the matthews but donna as much as i love her i I don't think it's Donna. I just think they're hard playing Donna for the emotional death. Yeah, Don, yeah, without a doubt. But Don is top of the list for the mold too. But I think it's really more that Don is going to get killed this season. They're going to take her out. And it'll be more of a sacrifice. Not like she's going to get killed. She's going to sacrifice herself to, to save other people's lives. Exactly. I would I would agree with that. And as of oh no, we got a couple more messages, but some of these are for Chloe. So, but but whatever. Let's 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 play them anyways. Uh, so, because people called in, let's play their messages. Hey everybody, it's Justin from Raleigh, North Carolina, saying okay. hey to Teflon and hey to Phil, and uh, fantastic work, Chloe. I'm a I'm a huge fan. I love the show. You're I love welcome. Your acting, you've been doing a fantastic. I'm job. having a great time uh, at this party. To get to the show was the autopsy the bio kind of reminded me of this um 
of this movie back in the day with like phantasms with this creepy old man, these like orbs that spikes will come out and hunt yeah, people down. And um, I was just, I'm just really enjoying the show. I love sci-fi, I love horror. So I just wanted to ask you, do you have any, uh, do you like horror? Do you, what are your, some of your favorite horror shows or, or sci-fi shows or supernatural shows? Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, uh, fellas, enjoy the, sh- enjoy the show as always. Great work. Thank you so much. Blessings, everyone. Happy summer. Happy June. And I know this was essentially for Chloe, not for us. But yes, I do like some horror stuff. I yep. must admit that I'm a little bit biased to the 90, 80s, 90s slasher horror era, like Friday, Friday 13th, but spe- specifically Nightmare on Elm Street. I always loved the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, even when they became comical. The character Freddy Krueger just always cracked me up. Nightmare on Elm Street, especially one, three, and a new nightmare are some of my favorite slasher cheesy horror movies. Obviously, there's a lot of better movies, but I was always partial to the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. How about you, Tony? What, what, yeah, what, you know that uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is always a classic. I remember the Phantasm movie 100% with the ball of the spike in it that would the, the fly around. I remember that 100%. Uh, I, uh, when I, was, uh, I remember watching that, not when it came out, but, you know, the remake and all that. I remember watching, I used to watch B-movie uh, horror. So there was one movie I remember called The Hand. Oh, yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, The right, Hand. Where yeah. a guy got his hand, he reached out in the car or something and took his hand out and the, the hand kept coming back to strangle him and shit. You know, I always loved movies like that and everything else i would say the scariest movie i ever watched if i had to pick one would probably because i was you know real young when i watched it would be the 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 original texas chainsaw massacre that was scary Uh, for for me the scariest movie i watched again because i was young was probably like amityville horror like just because like in the house type shit or poltergeist was really scary for me at the time because i would say mgm just released a thing called amityville uh, exploring the whole Amityville horror situation and stuff like that. But my know? thing with Freddy Krueger is I like them more as a comedian than like a horror guy. Like I like uh, get the prime time, bitch. Like, like yeah. I, I there. That's what it turned to. It wasn't supposed to be that. No, no. The first movie he's very frightening, and the second yeah. movie is and then obviously. When they realized they had a character. They moved it over to that. Yeah, and Robert England ate up that part and like owned it in this comic way, whereby the f- the first three movies were the first three movies. The first movie was awesome. Second movie was an offshoot. We can talk about the second movie, but a lot of people have perspectives about that. Then Nightmare on Elm Street three kind of yeah, the Dreamcatchers one, dream, the Dream Warriors one. Yeah, it was like really awesome. They bring back Nancy, all that, but everything after three kind of. You were rooting for Freddy to kill everybody because, yeah. because in Nightmare Friday the 13th got there too. But by Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, you were like wanting to see the crazy way. Like he turned someone that was afraid of bugs into like a butt, like into cockroaches or, or, or in a roach mode. Yeah, or overfeed them. And that girl that like got real chubby, you know, and kept feeding her or the video game one or the comic book kid where he cut him up or, you know. But it, yeah, it got they, that, that was from the, the commercial roaches check in and they don't check out. Yeah, and he's like, they roaches tri- bitch. Roaches don't check in, but they don't check out, bitch. And all that, you know. So the, yeah, you know, it, it switched to that. Uh, but with, with actual scary, you know, the extras. I remember my father used to, you know, look at me when we were little, and he would be like, look at me and say, I am Bazuzo. From the Exorcist movie, you know, he used to do that and everything else from back in the day. So, you know, I, Exorcist was, re- dude, Exorcist was really scary. And, and, uh, and I will say, I hope moving forward to keep this to from, I, I hope moving forward from leans even more into the horror aspects because they do it really well. No, the, all right. So we have Micah in the building rocking with us. Ooh. Again, if you are we get our five level, minutes with Micah. If, yes, if you are a boss level member, Bob, then you have a chance to come on any stream that we do. Any stream. What I do, whether it's me and Phil, me and LMR, me and a guest, you can come on for five minutes and rock with us. So let's bring her on right now. The beautiful Micah. Bam. Hey. Hey, what's going Hello, on? Miss Micah. It's Micah. 
Mika, Mika. I keep saying Mike. I do keep saying it. it's me. Me saying it. It's not. So I was just copying you. Too. He's copying me and everything. How are you doing, beautiful? How is everything? I'm good. I'm so upset that I miss Chloe, man. I mean, you could you I don't can know. Go back and watch it if you can. I know, but I wanted to like leave her a message and stuff. You know, I'm so upset. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. She should be back. She said she'd definitely be back on. So we'll definitely. Thank have you. How you guys? How you guys doing? Good. You're doing great. We're doing great. How did you feel about this episode? I loved it. I mean, I'm sad because I know it's about to end. You know. Mm -hmm. There's like two two episodes left. Well, we have more. We're, 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 this is episode seven, eight, now We have three episodes. Three episodes to go. All right. So we're, we're um, almost, there, almost there and everything else. But, uh, you know, we keep going. So come on, Mike, Mika. I'm sorry I keep saying Mika. Come on, Mika. Tell us all about your theories. What do, what do you got going on? What, what do you, what you think is going on? Okay. Well, first of all, I don't, I don't know what's up with Elgin, right? Um, I think that. I don't know. I think that he, there's something really up with him. And I think that, remember a couple of, uh, of streams ago, someone said that Elgin was um, Ellis and Fatima's baby? Yes. I'm thinking maybe, like, that might be him. Only because of the, the tub, how, you know, how she, like, the, the, the creature looked like her mm -hmm. at the end. What do you think about that? I don't think it's him just because of the kink of the hair and the skin tone. I think if they were going to bring him, they'd bring in some guy that looked like the Bridgerton dude. You know what I mean? That That's more look like a mixed race baby than an actual right. more like a black man like myself. So right. That, that would be the only reason why I wouldn't think it was him. Right. What do you think? Rufel? I mean, I think there could be something very... Interesting. Sorry, I, I ended up just putting on the background music. Don't worry, it's I made it. It's relatively free. Uh, the I think that it's an interesting theory, and I wouldn't put past some sort of time travel situation. But I don't necessarily think that. I think he's just sort of tapped into this. His antenna is tapped into whatever's going on in this world, and he's getting visions and and. Uh, and seeing this place and able to surf it in a way that Sarah and Abby weren't. But I do think it's an interesting theory and I wouldn't put it past a show doing something like that, especially if they decide to go really out there with some of the uh, sci-fi aspect of it, with the time travel. Um, I, you know, also I think that, what like the, like why are why are people seeing the music box now like um uh, Marielle she's seeing it in her dream and you know it's kind of strange um that ballerina though she, I had a nightmare about her the other night she's freaky <laughs> I don't <laughs> like her I, I I think it has to come down to we have to go back and look and see exactly what everybody ingested into their body. I know we, we, we've seen Elgin, we, ha we have to see if he's eaten anything or taken anything, but I think the other girl, when we deal with Chrissy's girlfriend, it could be the morphine that put it in her, right? That that made her see yeah. this thing, but we have to check right. back on him. I, I'm sorry, I was trying to use my laptop, but I couldn't. I know. I couldn't. I, I understand. No, Whatever. We, we've had that trouble with a, a other actor who came on that wasn't able to use a laptop for the Melon app. You know what I mean? So it could be something dealing with Melon. They're actually are changing like their software and everything around right now. I think it's messing things up. So yeah, if, it, if it keeps messing up, we might have to do it through uh, StreamYard. Through StreamYard or through, oh, I can run it through OBS and we can try, try to do it that way or something like that. But we'll, we'll figure it out. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you for having me come on. I like, I've, uh, I, I literally I cried for like ten minutes when I when I missed Chloe because I've been like waiting for two weeks to see this girl. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. We'll have, we'll, we'll have Elgin on. People asking if you're gonna go to Con Thrones this year. They want to know if you're gonna be there. You can come on anytime you want to wear 
uh, sweaters, like beautiful sweaters, like you're wearing now. You, you're always willing to come. Well, out. it's like a half sweater. Look, it's only like sleeves and a, and, and a turtleneck. Oh, all right, and that and that. This, all right, so I got very, it. very, very proper choice of camera angles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's a great. I've never seen anything like that before. In all this. I've never seen the half. It's pretty cool, right? It is very nice. Good, very good, nice. Ca good camera work, as the live chat says. Uh, uh, do, do we have any more voicemails to listen to while we have me here? Let's see if we have a voicemail from you. I uh, know uh, this is let's listen to a little bit of this voicemail right here. It's from Erica 562. Okay. Hey, Tony. Uh, my name is Joshua, calling from uh, Long Beach, California. Um, hey, Chloe. Um, love the show. Love you can be Chloe, Mika. I am. I, I wish I was Chloe. The, uh, That's my wife. <laughs> Bless everybody in the chat, man. I'm on good vibes today. I hope everyone is as well. Um, just want to say, Tony and Phil, thank you so much, like for just having the show, man. I remember last year when I first started watching the show, um, when I seen the trailer for it, I got into it pretty late. I was able to just binge it all the way through. Now that I'm caught up and it's week to week. It, it, it's terrible, man. I just want to, you know, just watch each episode. It's crazy. Same thing with uh, Game of Thrones. Um, I got into that pretty late, around 2020 in the pandemic. Now that house, now I'm caught up. Watch House of the Dragons. Uh, it, it, it's a terrible way for, you know, great shows week to week. But I love the build up, gets you talking about it and everything. But um, just like I said, thank you for just having the show for the fans. You know, uh, I put a, a bunch of my friends on the show it's just it's just a great show and uh thank you guys for having this uh pod stream up you know just for everybody to brainstorm and just talk about and react to the show no we really and do appreciate it on it's pretty cool so thank you guys please continue to do it and mm -hmm. chloe chloe this, love, is, for you. this love is for you your performance in the show you're, you're amazing cool. chloe and you are amazing oh, you know, um i, I <laughs> uh, a nurse or a doctor um, in some capacity in real life. Yep. And now you're an actor on From it. As someone that's looking to get into the acting scene themselves, I plan to attend um, acting school Dude, uh, later this I'll year. act I with you. Know, um, any tips? You know, I got you. That's looking to break into I got the industry. I got and um, just keep doing what you do. God bless everyone. Thank you. Now, uh, the key with this. Wait, sit down, damn it. <laughs> the key with this situation for acting is just find any way to work. Find any way to work, whether it be dead off, off Broadway stuff or uh, community theater yeah. or independent college films. The best way to go if you want film experience, uh, community theater for theater. If you want uh, film experience, go to colleges, uh, state colleges that have film programs. And also local, local theaters too, right? Local theaters as well. But those colleges, they're always looking for actors for their films around in Boston. Uh, uh, I sign up for like the BU casting notices. Uh, so you can uh, you can do student films like that. Those are good ways of getting, getting experience. And then by that, build up uh, a, a little uh, video resume that has all your – couple of roles and then start shopping that around for bigger roles and just work your way up slowly but surely there's no sort of hitting a home run that happens but it's really just keep working and keep working until you f get accidentally fall into the right opportunity that's it so. act, act, act like you're being with a woman work your way up slowly but surely right that's the way you gotta do it baby. and uh you know that, that, that i would say also you know listen any there's no small role so if you can do extra gigs uh, that's what I did. I've done extra. I've done a yeah, lot of me, extra me work. as well. Me as well, Tony. And we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. You do. What you do? Huh? Have you done? Well, I've been, I've been, what did you do? I've, I'm in Carlitos. The ones you can actually see me in. Uh, Carlitos Way. You can go check that. Cool. Out. You can see me in that, and I'm in the Howard Stern movie too. So, but yeah. Wow. Do, do do extra gigs, anything you can, just to get your, your name out there. Tony, uh, our friends, I, I, I think you're friends with them. Card, your screen after guild card, and once you have your screen after this guild card, then everything else will open up. I think you're friends with them as well, Tony, but like our, our good buddy, or my good buddy, the walking David, yes. he, uh, he, he plays, he, he just keeps doing it, bit parts, walk-ons, stuff, and you know, he, he's getting his voice out there. He was recently on a series where he played an announcer as in a uh, 
in uh i forget what what app it was on but it was uh it was, it was a show about uh, bull riders and stuff. So it is out there. Definitely <laughs> keep your work up. Keep going on. Keep doing it. Let's take another call for Chloe here. <laughs> I'm Chloe, Hello, yes. Tony, Bill, uh, Chloe, I, I see the show is starting off great. And uh, I'm calling from Los Angeles. My name is Ty. And I think Hi. I have a theory on the all bladder thing that is still in line with Tony's theory about them not eating them. I think the stress and the fear and that bio builds up in the gut and then they kill you and go retrieve the bio out of the gut. That's what I think Wait, what was is that? happening. What was that again? They're not the stress and the fear and that bio builds up in the gut, and then they kill you and go retrieve the bio out of the gut. That's what I think is happening. They're not eating the people. They're just going straight for that that buildup of that yellow stuff in the gut. And they kept on giving us hints about it throughout the whole uh, episode for as Fatima being pregnant, you have morning sickness. That's one, uh, you know, one of the reasons you can have, you know, that extra stuff in there. Uh, drinking too much, you know, being extremely nervous or anxious. And we had uh, who else threw up? Uh, the uh, I'm about to say Elgin and girlfriend. I was, yeah. I was about to call her crack. And Muriel. Yeah. Muriel. Marilyn, didn't she throw up as well? Marilyn, Marilyn. How's that crack? He says they call it crackhead. Oh, when you're going through uh, withdrawal oh. from you know whatever you're doing, that bile comes up as well. So I think all those were like little hints that they were telling us that that is what it's about to get that yellowy stuff that's in the bile. It's very possible it could be, and hopefully that can be used as a weaponized situation against the monsters in the future do you think what they got do you think what they got is going to be actually work out or do you think it's going to uh fail for i think they, i think they need some more stuff i think they need um you know as the body uh you know uh on real people like as the body you know continues to go through its process and all the fluids and stuff they need to wait a couple more days to see if anything else is excreting, you know, like uh, if they have any poop in their poop pants or something, or <laughs> so. So, so you, need, you need, you need, we need, we need to check check different crevices and see if we can get Poopy Pants Johnson involved in the situation. Yeah, all, you know, or like earwax, or you know, like um. Are you eating those in, weird Oreos, Tony? I'm just. You know I am. <laughs> shut up, Phil. Shut, shut up. I don't. I don't want to hear. What you, I don't hear your you, shit that I felt. So, how do we find out how about the mole? Like, how did you guys? I, I, mean, I missed that part. People ask you in the, in the chat, "Who do you think the mole is?" We have a question. Me? Yeah, you. I think uh, Fatima is the mole. Definitely. So you're on the Phil bandwagon. Jump on my jump on my bandwagon. And I did. I didn't used to think that. Only until um, now that she's starting to act weird right about the pregnancy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it, it's weird because, you know, like if, if she was a mole and she couldn't get pregnant in real life and now that she's pregnant. So now she's stuck in this, you know, in this project and she in being that she never thought she could have a baby. And now her like her dream is coming true to have to have a family. And now it's screwed because she's stuck in this, you know, situation. And I think it's really like that's why I think she's a mole now. I didn't think that until this episode. I right, hear you, uh, Fernandez asked sent me a super chat. Said, "Do you think, thank you so much for it? Very generous to you." He said, "You think your theories are holding overall?" I do. I, I think my theories are holding overall. I, I'm not worried about them in the least bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but let them keep going. As for Fatima being the mole. Me personally, I don't see her being there long enough to do it. If she's been there only a year, 
and as they claim they were doing a year anniversary party for her, I don't see it. Now, if you want to go into the witchcraft situation and all that, I think that lends credence to what Fatima is. Right? But you know what? And she's she's the only one that doesn't that like n has never told her story about the day she arrived. Like the only thing that we know about the day she arrived is when Ellis saw her. But she does have saying, a poster, right? So if you look at it, she has a missing poster that is missing. Where are the, po where are the posters at? Yeah, the where missing, are the posters? I, I I posted all of them. I've done videos and put all the posters. I saw. Yeah, you're right. I saw that. That's right. Yeah, so Tony, uh, we we have a voice a voicemail from. Uh, let's let's listen to this. Hi, Teflon TV. Hi, Chloe. It's Mika. I'm so sorry. I'm late. Please send my voicemail. I love you, Chloe. We got a voicemail from Mika. Mika, what do you think of this voicemail? <laughs> I was insane. Like, talk about like crazy. Like, I have no life. <laughs> I'm so oh, upset no, that I, I missed it. We, we honestly, you, we appreciate, we appreciate it more than you know uh, to be able to, uh, because I think all of us. I'm gonna get a little weird here for a second, but I think when you're younger, it's easier to have a kind of like a, a group of friends to hang out and all watch something and get into together. And I think what Tony does individually with himself and me individually on my channel and us, both of us together, I think what we do is trying to like bring that feeling of a bunch of friends hanging out, getting yeah. to watch the show together and getting to talk about it. Exactly. And, uh, and like a feeling of belonging and, you know, like it's cool. I haven't had that in a long time either, you know? Exactly. And that, I think that's the, so it's not, it's not about you not having it. I mean, like this is that, this is the social activity I have every week. This is my one drink, my hangout drinking party night is hanging out with Tony yeah, on Sunday night. I think I drink or a lot, but I don't. The only time I drink is when I'm streaming. Sunday I don't drink at all. The only when I'm streaming, I drink. And that's it, you know, which is why I'm trying to switch the vodka and everything else because I have the con coming up soon. So I want to be in the best shape I can when I go down to Florida. Where's the con at? In Orlando. It's not I have the worst luck in Orlando. I used to live there. Uh, um, and I didn't ever. I never watched my throne, so maybe I can watch it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go that, go to that. You can just I've never been to one before. Go to the Don Tony Teflon and fill the issues, guys. Because we'll be up there, so you don't have to go there. But besides I'm, that, I'm I'm sixty forty right now at this 60, point. But. Sixty four. I'll be there, guaranteed. But besides that, uh, let's go into the uh, announcement that we have to say real quick. And oh yeah, I, I have, a, yeah, and, yeah. Then I, and then I have a couple. Then I have a couple emails, Tony, that have been right. sitting in the bin for a while. All right, we'll, we'll get those to those. So the announcement is this: that we're we, we're gonna have the from con. We know that for a fact. It will be in Nashville. All right, we'll have next, next year in Nashville. We'll have the from con. Oh so right. That's guaranteed. That's gonna be there. Date to be announced. Twenty twenty four. Date date will be announced. But it's guaranteed. We're doing it next year. We're doing it in Nashville. I just had a conversation with our favorite doctor who was just on the show, and she said Aww. that she is with going to yeah, that. She right? is it. She she's always she said, wanted to go to Nashville, said, so this is a good to go to Nashville. It's always been a thing of her dream, so she said she's definitely in. So we can just about ninety percent put her that she will be at the con with her, us at the con and everything else so you are oh, in, in person and everything else she will be at the con with us. All, also, we, have also, more, we have a whole year it's going to be planned and we still got to talk about our peoples and everything else like so right now we can pretty story. much say that definitely we'll have the jasmine creature and yep. ske schedule pending everything schedule pending because you can never tell with these things so this isn't like you know, i'm glad but uh, but but people that are interested, we'll say the people that are interested so far that are open are interested, are Jasmine Creature and uh, and and now uh, Chrissy and also uh, so we talked to one other person Hannah? that said they might said they might Hannah. Be, uh, we, we, I'll I'll hold my tongue right now. Yeah, right? we won't give the other person until we got a different confirmation on it. But most likely we'll have the smile creature there. We'll have Jasmine creature there, and we'll have definitely have Chris Christie will, will be up in there giving their names from the show and everything else. We're gonna do our best, but we want to be fair to the celebrities and give them what they deserve to be able to come and take care of them. And the more people we can get, the more we can be able to do that so uh but we want to make sure you guys have the best time so uh so this first one we're going to be figuring things out as we go but 
let, let's see. Well, once Tony gets gets the website up as he's yeah. building right the now, being we, built right now, and we and can get and we can get commitments to people that we know are definitely doing it. We can assess who we can actually get once we know what the numbers are. And we'll have different levels of, of passes you could buy. We'll have the regular pass you could buy. And then we'll have a pass that guarantees you an autograph and a picture with each of the actors that are being there and everything else. And yeah. we announced this the other time too. We will, whether it's during the season or not, there will be panels and there'll be all that stuff too, yeah. of course. We'll but also, also, Tony and I will be doing a live escaping from podcast in front of an audience one of the evenings and yeah. uh, drinking awesome. drinking will be hanging out but we'll be doing a actual live podcast in front of you guys at one point in time in this trip as well that's it uh, maybe we'll be able to and if you're a member we'll bring you up on stage and you can rock with us for a little bit exactly of time again. i think but i think both both of us have done these live streams for a while and we're both have experience and and love being in front of live audiences in a musical setting or in theater or whatever for both of us uh tony's uh, rocked the music stage many a time i've rocked the music stage many a time and i've done some theater tony's done some acting as well i used to be, a, I used to be an entertainer in my, my so day we, also we can't <laughs> wait to do a live <laughs> podcast in front of an audience we can't wait to do a live show in front of you guys. And, and we're, we're going to have a costume, you know, uh, we'll have a costume uh, prize or anyone who rocks the best costume of someone from from. We'll have a we'll have, you know, the audience judge and we'll have a prize for that. And we will also have a bull riding contest that we're just going to call the far away. No, now, and Tony, I'm not meaning to change the subject to a bad thing. We mentioned it a few seconds ago. A couple people in the live chat are asking about the writer's strike, not a tribute to the FromCon, but do you think it's going to delay season three? Nope. No, because when I look at the people who have writ written this show, it's really like one person, right, who's written most of these episodes and everything from him. So I think they can deal with him and get that done. You know what I mean? So uh, let's, what let's, do you, what do you, what oh, sorry. Mean? No, go Mika. What was that? What do you, what are you going to do after the show is over? What, what show you got planned on next? What uh, are we going to do without it? <laughs> I know Tony and I will both be doing probably different things on our channel, but yeah. uh, I know upcoming, there's a lot of series. So make sure you subscribe to Teflon TV and fill the issues guy to check all of that out. And Tony's going to be bounced over to my channel to talk about some stuff. And I'll be over here talking about some stuff as well. No so uh, let's get oh, to it. I always keep from content all year long. Yeah, all year long, we'll be doing from some, some from stuff. So make sure you stay. Black Mirror is coming out. That's a good show. I'll get uh, you through the long night. Don't worry about it. So uh, Nadia, Nadia says, Boyd in a coma in the hospital. His mind is trying to make sense of it. He can hear what is going on in the hospital. His mind is filled in with what he hears. The doctors and his family is around him. Or it's aliens in the twilight zone. They are watching him. It, is there any way this is a St. Elsewhere New Heart situation, Tony? Is this all in Boyd's head? No. No, that's whack. No, it I, can't I, be. No. No, it's not that. It's, mm -hmm. it, it will not be that at all. I guarantee you that. This is actually happening, and this is what's going down. And uh, this is from Dukes. If you as a person, and I, I'm very curious of this answer, Tony, as I read this question. Uh, this is the first time I'm reading it. If you as a person could strategize one offensive maneuver against the monsters in From, what would it be? Sincerely, Christian from Toronto. I would make a trap and, ca and, and catch them in the trap. I would I would bag them up, catch them in the trap, and after I caught them in the trap, then I would I would work on them. I would, as as Pulp Fiction would say, I would get medieval on the ass. I'm going with something uh, building off what you said before, Tony. I'm pouring gasoline on in the tunnels while they're sleeping, and then lighting a match. <laughs> or, or what about a talisman at the end of the tunnels or something? But so they can't get out. Yeah, it's trapping those, trapping their asses out in there. 
Um, Carlos asks, how's it going? Hope all is well. I have some cool information that might interest you. Your podcast escaping from a recap breakdown. Uh, oh, th thank you so much. We're, we're number 34 in the category in Thailand and number 244 in the category in TV and film in the UK. Happy podcasting. Thank you, Carlos. I'll take it. I'll take it. We appreciate it. And everyone, if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, and you're listening to it, 64% of the people that are listening to the audio version are listening to it on Apple uh, platform. Please, please, please give us a review and five-star rating if you like us or, you know, whatever rating. Uh, we got a couple of review bombing going on there. But uh, so if you like us and you're listening to us on that platform, make sure you give us some ratings and comments because it helps push it out to more people. And I'll say this, let, 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 let but Tony, we just reached a thousand listens on our podcast. Beautiful. I appreciate nice. everyone who's actually listening. And I'll say this when we do have the from con, we'll be invited. We'll have panels. We'll have the main stage. We do interviews with, with the actors. We'll have panels where we do theories and everything else. And we will have contact other YouTubers that they contact us that are, and podcasters that are on this show that cover from that want to come down and, and get a panel. We will have spots for them too. So it's not just going to be the Don Tony Teflon and Phil. We're not just trying to keep it to ourselves. We'll have other people from other channels we want you to interact with and everything else and make this a true from them. Hundred percent. Tony, ready for another voicemail? Yes, of course. Okay, this is from, uh, I think it's like a good buddy, Drunk Bishop. Let's see. Hey, Bishop from Florida. I think uh, Victor is the mole. Reason being is every time, first of all, he's the oldest in the group, right? Yep. As far as we know, he, I think he's the oldest out of all of them. He's been there the longest, right? <laughs> out of everybody alive. And, uh, also, the fact that every time somebody like Jade or anybody brings up any type of question that gets a little too, you know, I think despite his mental trauma, I don't think that's everything to do with the reason he's shying away from these questions. I think he knows something. I think he knows that things are supposed to go a certain way, but these guys are kind of disrupting that. And, hmm. you know, um, I just want to know what your guys' opinions on Victor being the possible mole. Thanks. Mika, is it Mika or Micah? I'm wrong. What? It's Mika. Mika. Mika, do you think Victor is the mole? No, definitely not. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think definitely, so. Either. You know why? You know why? Um, I, I don't think he's smart enough. No offense. You know, he's like he's like a, a child stuck oh, in a, a an old. You know. There. Um, he doesn't know when. What's that? That's, would, that's a fair perspective. He, it would be a Kaize Sosa situation where he's playing dumb just to stay in there with them. You know what I mean? So the, it would be a, a reveal where you realize that he's been just playing the game the whole time. It's hard for me to see Victor just because he's been so young when he got there. It would have to have been a situation where his mom was down with it. And then somehow she got right. got, and now he took it over from his mother and everything else. Uh, that would be the only way I could see it being him. I, it's I can't. I'm not saying he's not, but that would be the only way. But would he be go? I mean, listen. If you're in a mole, you're doing tests. He's doing tests on the trees. That could be part of being a mole. Mm -hmm. Measure the trees, measure these things out, and everything else like that. Be under the radar if you're a mole. He's definitely under right. the radar. Uh, be there for a long time. He definitely checks that box. So I can understand exactly why you would think it would be him. If I had to bet, I would say that most likely it's not him. Yeah, I, pe people in the live chat, I agree with you, Tony. People in the live chat that maybe agree say uh, he's pretending. Imagine if Victor was raised by the monsters. Maybe his mom was one of the monsters. Uh, it's it, it's definitely an interesting perspective. Uh, in the uh, text message from 334 says, this is Selena, excuse me, Tabitha and her husband make my blood boil every time they run their mouth. Plus the, gate, the gatekeeping, the monsters location, it's <laughs> whack. I hate them. Uh, what oh, are, no. What are your opinions, Mika, on uh, the... On, uh, 
on the two of them, on the Matthews, on uh, Tabitha and Jim? I, I, I love the Matthews family. So, um, you know, I just, I think that I don't, I, I see a lot of bad comments about them, about bad acting and, and this and that. And I, you know, I, I, I don't see how they can say that because I don't know if you, if you have ever seen Tabitha. She was on that show, The Affair, mm-hmm. when she was younger. And uh, I think she's a very, very good actress. And Jim, I mean, I, I just think it's, the, you know, they're not getting, the, the show started out with them, you know, like basically it was like the show was like mostly about them when it first came on. And now they're hardly even in it. And it's kind of like, I don't know. It would just be weird. To I, feel like, I feel like Tabitha. It, to me, it would be weird to have the people that get trapped in it are is actually the mold. Uh, the, we, we're, we're seeing this place through their eyes and them experiencing yeah. it with us. So for that reason, I just don't think it would be them or would be Jay. Uh, just for that reason, when it's all said and done. You know what Tony, I mean? we have we have cleared the decks for now, except for the way back machine that we'll do on the stream later when we catch up. But we've cleared the decks of voicemails. All right, so we're going to get out of here. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday to do the theory stream for the next episode. We'll touch on things from this episode, and we'll go through the uh, the footage. If anyone has the footage of, of next episode, please send it to me. Absolutely. M- Mika, thank you so much Mika. for joining us. We really do appreciate it. I'm losing you. No, you were you were awesome tonight. We we do appreciate it. Have an amazing night. Well, that shout out with that definitely was great to have you. Anytime you want to come on, you always able to come on. It's it, it's your membership privilege. So always, and it's not just that we enjoy having you on. Exactly, exactly. That that is amazing. It's great to have the members that that uh, support both of our channels and. And uh, it's awesome that you offer that to be able to uh, to let Mika uh, pop on in here for uh, for for the discussion. And let me uh, say, give a shout out to Chloe for jumping on with us and rocking with us and everything else while she was at a, a concert. She could have did it, but she she still chilled. If you came late, then just watch the first uh, thirty minutes because she's on for the first thirty. Yeah, minutes. yeah, and, and you can kind of hear part of the concert in the background for most of it. Without a shadow of doubt. Next week we have the actor who plays Elgin. We'll oh, be dude, I, I can't wait to talk to Elgin. <laughs> He'll be already here rocking. With. He gonna have to answer. For that damn potato sack, baby. He got, <laughs> that for, he got the answer for that shit. All right. Uh-huh. If you like the way we do this, please thumbs up the video. Spread this across the realm. And as always, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace.